All right, here we go. The mighty return of Tony Yeo. Fresh out the 50 Cent final lap international tour. I got to move like this now because I'm back in New York. I'm uh, not in Australia no more. I had yeah. fun. You could be off point. You know, it's different. You could be off point in Australia. Mm. They don't even got guns out there. Right. So living, so being out there for six months, four to, well, I'll say half of the tour was there. So I say three months to four months mm -hmm. overseas to come back to New York. There's all you see, you know, Pooh Shiesties and, you know. Yeah. It's back to this. Back to this. Back well, to New York. For loud. We back, man. Final We're lap back. tour. Huh? We're back. And I want to talk about the final lap tour in a second, mm -hmm. but I can't start off the interview without talking about what's happening with Cat Williams Oh, right shit. now. Right. Would you say that Cat Williams is the 50 set of comedy right now? I would say that I met Cat, and um, <laughs> he definitely went... All right, so when we look at comedy, I look at it like this. This got to be like... I couldn't even say top five. I say top 10. Mm. So... With starting in the top five, we're going to go with what? Richard Pryor? Mm -hmm. Right? People don't understand. Richard Pryor was in so many movies from Toy to... It was different, man. It was just different movies. I told you Toy is one of my favorite movies. Mm -hmm. Superman 3, right. to me, is when he crossed over. Yeah. If people don't know, that's, that came out years, years ago. But he was, to me, was like the first black actor to kind of cross over. Not one of the first, but that was big. Because Superman, come on, Clark Kent was like, you know, man, as a kid. <laughs> yeah. So Richard Pryor, and then I would go with Eddie Murphy, number right. two. Me too. Because I don't know, would you count movies in there too, or just stand up? It's hard to say, but I, I think if you combine them, both of them, that's how you throw Richard Pryor and Eddie Murphy above everyone else. Yeah, because I'm looking the at the movie. Comedic. I'm looking at the movies too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Raw. You know, coming to America. Trading places. Beverly Hills Cop. Come right. on, bro. What was my man in Beverly Hills Cop with him? The white dude. What's his name? Oh, the... My man, Beverly Hills Cop. Judge Reinhold. All right, cool. That's that's that him right there. Beverly Hills right. Cop. How many of it was a sequel? It was one, two, and well, three. Well, there's a new one that's coming out, like, soon. With Eddie Murphy? Yeah, with Eddie Murphy. Oh, yeah, I'm going to check that one. Yeah, probably on Netflix. But the second something. Coming to America was... Uh, yeah, the first one was It was, was kind of hard to top the first one. Boomerang was one of my favorites. Oh, come on. Eddie Murphy got classics. That's why I put him number two. Yep. Number three, who would you put there? <sighs> Dave Chappelle? Yeah, I'm going with Dave Chappelle. Yeah. Because his series was just yeah, too crazy. Right, plus his TV show was, was Yeah, epic. his TV show was nuts. The Chappelle show was like, yeah. number four, I got to put Martin. You got to put Martin there. Yeah. I, I guess- Movie-wise the... and Martin the show. Come on, he had Biggie Smalls on there. Remember we got oh, beat oh, up yeah, by no, Tommy Hearns? The show was epic. He hosted Def Comedy Jam at his abs absolute height. Right. So we talking stand up and movies in the combination. Mm -hmm. Right. Now that now what's that? Four? Yeah, that's four. Now, number five, who would you put there? No, hold, hold on. Okay, so we got Pryor, Murphy, mm -hmm. Chappelle, mm -hmm. Martin. Martin. So now we got five. Ooh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. We might have to put Cat that number five, geez. Cat, yeah. I I'll put Cat over Kevin Hart. Personally, I understand that Kevin Hart's probably I, more accomplished. I mean, yeah, I know he's more accomplished and he got like better management or whatever, or whatever the case may be. But Cat Williams, yeah, I'm gonna put him number five, geez. Then number six, see this, we, we can't leave our white com comedians too, though. Seinfeld? Like, I'll put, I like John Candy. Okay, well, he never did stand up, did he? I think he did. He may have, but he's known for. But I like John Candy movies, like yeah. Uncle Buck and all the other movies he was in. That's one of my favorite. You know what I mean? Seinfeld, of course, on there. But I'll put Jim Carrey there. I don't. Jim Carrey got to be up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah come yeah. on, just Jim, just for Jim Carrey. Think about him being on in Living Color, because mm -hmm. you got to think about how many people the Wayne's brothers put on. Right. J Lo, Jim Carrey, Jamie Fox. Mm -hmm. Everybody was on in Living Color first. Uh, George Carlin. Definitely. George Collins got to be up there. Yeah. But then, then there's Jamie Foxx, like you just said. That's another big one. Oh, Jamie Foxx with the stand-up? Now you got to put Bernie Mac somewhere in it. Bur yeah, I guess Bernie Mac. I guess, yeah. See, the Jamie Foxx is so multi-talented because he's got an Oscar for doing Ray, and he also sings. But I guess on the comedy side, there's other comedians that are it's so many comedians. There's so many comedians, but I guess everybody got an opinion on who's, who's the best. Uh, I mean, Chris Rock. Yeah, Chris Rock, you got to throw you him got, You got to throw him in there. You got to throw Chris Rock in there. Uh, and, you know, although he's not in everyone's good graces right now, there's Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby does stand-up? Bill Cosby does stand-up. You never seen Bill Cosby's uh, parenthood or uh, uh, fatherhood? 
No. That's one of the biggest stand-ups of all time. No, I've never seen You've never that. seen that? Oh, you're bugging. You I know, I know I made Bill Cosby from the Cosby show, so I'm Well, just... I mean, there's that, but then his stand-up career, plus he was, you know, Uptown, Uptown Saturday Night and all that type of, you know, right. all those big films. Yeah. Um, hmm. hmm. So what do you think about Cat? I think, I think Cat, I mean. Cat, Cat is definitely top 10. You could argue for top five. Cat is going to say what he want to say, man. And, yeah. and that's just who Cat Williams is. I remember we, I remember meeting him, and when he did the show, he came out for 50 had him out for I think one of the shows in Atlanta and he came out and he was like he was like hiding behind something. Yeah, it was Tycoon Weekend. He was hiding behind something. And then he just came running out and I was just like, yo, this motherfucker, when he's in his zone, mm. he's in his zone. Yeah. But Kevin Hart is a good businessman. You can't take that from him. He's like Yeah. No, you know, I mean he's a great businessman and you know, listen, he has movies with the rock. Once you yeah, once you're in movies with the rock, you, yeah, it's you, over. You, but you, in, good. in terms of like my brand of comedy, I would put Cat above Kevin Hart. Of course. I mean, yeah, I would too. Because I feel like, you know, Cat Williams, even when he got jumped by the little kid, like, took him down, <laughs> he flipped that. He came to Brooklyn the next day. Made jokes about and it. And made jokes about it. Yep. Like, who could make jokes about themselves? That's some, like, I like Cat because Cat got a Richard Pryor style of me. Oh, yeah, you got to throw Mike Epps on there, though. See, I think Mike Epps is Yo, better. Yo, listen, I went to a show in Atlanta during Final Lap Show, okay. Final Lap Tour, and Mike Epps had me crying out my seat. And I forgot his guy's name. I'm sorry, but his guy was funny as shit too, bro. I'm sorry, I gotta remember his name. If you if we could find out his name, one of y'all, he his his it's one guy that is funny as fuck with Mike Epps. I gotta have Mike Epps on that list because when you think about Friday, and I spoke to Mike Epps about this, for him to do Friday too. He was following Chris. He Tucker. told me personally nobody on set believed in him. Yeah. So I'm looking at him coming after Chris Tucker to do Friday 2. And Friday 2, come on, you know the sequel. It's hard to do the sequel. Mm -hmm. It's one of the hardest things to do in the world. And I was just like, yo, Mike Epps. Even on Janky Promoters, him and Ice Cube, that was one of my favorites too. Yeah, I mean, and then Shout out to Chris Ice Cube. I do love Ice Cube. You remember the whole Biggie thing? Yeah, yeah we're going to talk about that. I do love Ice Cube. We're going to talk about that. But, I mean, uh -huh. Chris Tucker... At his height, you know, before he turned like super Christian and just started doing rush hour movies, I felt that he was he was the best of that era at that time. Right. You know, when he did like Def Comedy Jam, then he did Friday, then he did Money oh, Def, Talks. Def Comedy Jam was the that was the shit. That was the shit. There was some good shit on back then. Like yeah. it, it was some good shit, some good content. Def Comedy Jam was definitely the funniest shit. I mean, uh Cat Williams burned everybody. I mean, he's going to say what he want to say. Some people are just like that. Yeah. I'm like that. Some I say what I want to say. A lot of people say what they want to say. You know, you know, it, what has he got to lose? He's already a millionaire. He's rich already. Right. He's, he's a You know multi, what I'm saying? So he just, he's expressing himself. He's going to say what he got to say. It's all good. You know, but some people might offend to it. But I like Tiffany Haddish. I like Kevin Hart. I like, you know, Steve Harvey. I like I like all these people. Yeah, Cedric so, and Yeah, Cedric Ludacris the Entertainer. And I think everybody. they Ludacris, they all legends. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In itself. So you he gonna ruffle some feathers, but Cat Williams don't give a fuck. That's just what he do. Oh yeah, that was like the hit him up of comedy interviews right Definitely. there. Definitely. So <laughs> you Cat, know I mean? you know, shout to Cat Williams. He going do what he do and shout to everybody you mentioned because they all legends anyway. So Right. You know, it's, it's everybody just going to talk about it. It's, it's crushing the internet right now. That's oh, all. Oh, yeah. And everyone about. he's talking about is responding from Michael Blackson. To, oh, we got to throw Ricky Michael Smiley, Blackson on our list, to everybody. too. Yeah. Yeah, man. All, all people that I've interviewed that have come on my What's show. What's Mike Epps guy? Henry Welch. Henry, Henry, Henry Welch. Welch. I went to a show. He's funny. You got to check him Henry out. Henry Welch. Okay. Yeah, him and Mike check Epps. Him out. I'm going to check him out. All right. Well. You're fresh off the tour. Everyone's like, how come Yayo ain't coming back to your show? How come we don't see Yayo on your show nah, no more? Yayo's Does Yayo don't Shelton. fuck with you no more? Oh, Shelton. are you and Yayo beefing? I'm nah, like, no, nah, he's we on not tour. Beefing. We, I'm on tour. Shout to everybody, man, that, that tap in. I appreciate you. Shout yes. to everybody overseas, everybody in the U.S., all around the world that tap into these Vlad interviews because they definitely was talking about you everywhere I went. Mm. Shout to 50, you know what I'm saying, because he's one of the only artists that could do 103 dates. <laughs> 103 dates, yeah. 24 countries. Right. The final lap tour. Mm -hmm. From what I understand, in the first week, 840,000 tickets were sold. Yeah, I mean, I mean, 50's a big artist, man. He's an icon. So a lot of people, you know, they talk numbers, talk all this, but, you know, 50's the type, that tour, his merch is in the millions. You know what I'm saying? Just his yeah. merch alone 
could be <laughs> in the millions with a, a, a average rapper is not making. He's an icon. You know, he got all kind of business deals, but he works for that. Mm -hmm. You know, and the reason why I praise him so much is because when you see his work ethic, like imagine being on tour with somebody. I'm tired. We just did six shows back to back. 50s running under stages, 50s getting lifting cranes, 50s switching seven outfits, 50s getting outfits ripped off him, 50 go to his room, he goes to the gym twice a day, 50s not fucking around, he's in a big suite, he don't smoke no weed, he really don't drink like that, he's reading scripts, he's got secure movie deals, so when you're seeing somebody doing that, he got the Louisiana, Tyler Perry, big ass fucking type of studio out there, mm -hmm. you know, so when you see somebody working like that, it motivates you. Then he comes home. Look, me, I need to press the reset button. He's right at the Nick game with his son. <laughs> you know, shout to Fat Joe and Tracy Morgan and everybody was there and everybody had their kids and it was a Christmas fiesta over there. You know what I mean? But I got to press the reset button. I need some rest, maybe a couple of massages, a little caviar pancakes. <laughs> you know, let me re <laughs> let me pet my dogs a little something. Let me relax. Right. Reset button. So when you got a guy with all this money, because he has money, don't let whatever motherfucker say fool you. The motherfucker, like I said, his merch make millions. And and you could ask anybody on tour, like the people that ran the tour from Live Nation, shout to Tony Moore, shout to Curtis, shout to Flav, shout to the whole production. There's just a whole bunch of, it's a lot of stuff that comes behind it. And, and they'll tell you, they be like, yo, artists can't do this. Your favorite rapper can't do what 50 just did. Mm -hmm. So for me, I never get it fucked up and think, that all these people out there screaming for me. Of course, some of them were screaming for yeah, it was cool. But that's 50 fan base. He's a, you know, he's a he's a big time actor, icon. He's not just a regular rapper, you know. Well, but yeah. when you see somebody work like that, you always big them up because you're like, a lot of people. If they was in my shoes, I wish I could just intern somebody and bring them around and let them watch 50. Because 50's giving us game every single day. It's just for you to sit there and soak it up. But you know, you get if if you get anybody in position. You should soak up the game that you can soak up as much as you can. Well, Even you, Vlad, because I, I soak up game from you. Yeah, and I soak up game from you, I'm too. I'm learning a lot of stuff about this podcast. I mean, stuff. when I was around 50, I soaked up game from him right. early on. I'm soaking up game with you because I, I, I'm telling you, I'm going to have one of the biggest podcasts. I'm going to be up there with, 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 the, with the greats. As you should. That's, that's my next thing. As you should. Because I love I, talking, obviously. I, I mean, from what my rough math mm -hmm. have come up with, he probably made over $100 million gross in just ticket sales. I, I don't want to say, right? I never talk 50 numbers. I don't want to talk his numbers, but I could just say just his merch is like in the millions. It's like ridiculous. Yeah. So if somebody's merch is in the millions, I can't. W were you selling merch on who, tour? Nah. Why not? Because I'm good. I don't ask for too much. I'm. I'm why, why would there be no free Yayo shirts like I'm, I'm wearing right if now? If I'm making six figures, I don't, it's like, I don't ask for much. I'm like, I'm making six figures. So why would I bother you for more? It's cool. Well, but you're part of the tour. Yeah, I understand, but I'm not worried okay. about that. Hey, I'm man, make, listen, I'm not trying I'm, to get in your pockets Trust me, I'm making here. a great, great <laughs> check. And I'm staying at the And You got to understand, it's like a lot of artists don't get treated. Like people think Fifth is a bad guy, you know. But when you're staying in like the Four Seasons, you know, motherfucker, she got ornaments and the yeah, Eiffel Tower. Yeah, I was just at the Four Seasons listen, in uh, New Orleans. Yeah, you was at, That's see, where I stay. I look, stay at the Four Seasons. the Four, four Seasons, seasons yes. you got the Eiffel Tower there, you got... Mm -hmm. You're staying at the uh, the W. Yep. We, we staying at the W in Bahrain, Ciparani's on the water, the F1 shit. There's yep. a racetrack around the hotel. You're staying in the Armani Hotel. You just missed Giorgio Armani for breakfast. It's a fucking movie. Right. <laughs> Working with 50 is a fucking movie, bro. Right, and you always talk about caviar pancakes, which I didn't yeah. see, but I did see you post a video of caviar dumplings. Yeah, they had that on one of those. That was in the W in um, Dubai? No, that was in Abu Dhabi. Abu My Dhabi. first shout out to everybody right. in Abu Dhabi. It was crazy. Cipriani's was on the water. You would fucking hear race cars around your hotel. Mm -hmm. It's a racetrack around the hotel. They do the Formula F1 shit there. Abu Dhabi, one of the be most beautiful countries in the world. My yep. first time there. Yeah, well, uh, the United Arab Emirates is yes. the country. Abu Dhabi is the city. Definitely. I went to Dubai, well, which is the other big city. Yeah, over Dubai there. is an hour away. We went to Dubai. Exactly. We we went to, you know, I love Dubai. Yep. You know, and that's what I'd say. Listen, the money's great. The money is excellent. You know, six, I made six figures on this tour, so I just don't tell my numbers. But the money is great, but the flying to the experience, like my first time in Thailand, mm. yep, I was kind of mad because we didn't have enough time. It takes six hours to view the temples, so we didn't have enough time. Okay, so. What was the craziest things that happened on this tour? You're not going to tell me this tour happened without some craziness involved at some point. Um, 
Come on. It man. was a it was numerous crazy things. Like I could tell you, um, like we was in Australia, we was in Perth, we got on my man yacht. Right? Shout out to my man Daryl. Shout out to all the big guys over there. All the, let's pause on that. But shout out to my man Daryl. Uh, we got on a yacht, we was chilling, and I forgot what is what is this thing called? It's like a big rat. It's called a uh, quacker, a quaker. A, you ever heard of a quaker? Uh, a giant white-tailed rat. Look, uh, look, what is it called? A quaker. Look, just put big thing, fuzzy thing in uh, Perth. Cause quaker. I like, huh? A, a, a quaker. So you see, it looks like a big rat, right? Yeah. So we see the thing about Australian people is Australian people are fearless, like. Some people are from like the outback. The outback got snakes, kangaroos, right? Fucking quackers and all kinds of shit there. So they're like fearless. Like where we we went from Perth to a small island. I forgot what the island was called. Oh my god, I hate when I forget stuff. I forgot what the island was called. But we went from Perth to a small island, and on this island, there's sharks all through the water. Hmm. So you know the boat is bouncing. Motherfuckers are splashing. I'm like, motherfuckers getting, Uncle Murder getting seasick. You know, hood motherfucker. You could be as hood as you want to be, but motherfucker getting seasick on that bitch. We drinking, we smoking. So when we get to the island, they're like, yo, when you get to the island, you're going to love it. There's this whole thing's called, a, what is it called? Quacker? Quackers. A quackers. And they like, they, they're, they're so cute. So when we, you know, we're like, yeah, it kind of looks like cool. a mix between a rat and a koala. That's what it looks like. <laughs> right. So, you know, <laughs> The chicks in Perth are tough. You know what I'm saying? Like, I done met chicks in Canada. Like, you hear me, Vlad? Yeah. And Canada is like, I met chicks that look white. You know what I mean? You'll meet them, they're fans. Oh, oh no, I'm Indian, yeah, yo, right? And these women skin moose and all that. They kill, they'll kill a moose. No, serious. Right. The girls is from the reservation. They know how to kill moose, skin moose. And, and you'll look at her and you'll just think of some innocent chick. The chicks from Australia are like that, too. So we go out with Daryl, his friends, you know, that's my guy. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my man Tony Moore. He he plugged us in with all the, you know, all the rich guys in Perth. You know what I'm saying? We on a yacht. There's, you know, there's ladies on there, whatever, right? Now check it, Vlad. Mm -hmm. We go to eat at a place. Now a guy says, don't touch the quacker. <laughs> a girl takes the quacker and puts it on the table. She's wrestling it. Now when you wrestling it, that's like you wrestling a, a, a fucking, uh, raccoon or some shit. That shit is scratching the floor. She wrestling and she... I'm like, yo, this girl is crazy. She puts it on the table. The quacker takes half of a pizza pie. Big rat. I'm like, yo, that's a rat. Murder petted it. I was like, yo, murder, you was bugging. <laughs> I showed that shit to 50. He was like, nah, that's a rat, man. That shit was a big rat. Murder petting it. I'm like, yo, you bugging. You get bit by that shit, you fucking dead. So shit like that. Different animals. You know, Thailand, they got the temples and um, the animals out there. Like, you walk with elephants and shit. Yep, I've been out shit there. Shit like that. I didn't get to do it because we didn't have enough time. But, you know, it, it, I love traveling, man. Traveling is the shit. Mm -hmm. Paris, Dubai, Abu Dhabi. Um, I love Australia, of course. I love Perth. Perth got good bud. You know what I'm saying? It, mm -hmm. it's, it's nice. You got Melbourne. That's a big city like New York. You got Sydney, big city. Nice, good food. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then you got... Gold Coast. Gold Coast is like the Miami mm -hmm. of Australia. That shit is super hill too. So traveling is the best. We went everywhere. And then we did a lot of the city states. Like we went to Denver. You know, motherfuckers needed oxygen tanks out there. I'm not going to say who, but motherfuckers needed oxygen tanks out there. Oh, so high. I see how the Denver Nuggets always win games because I could say, I feel like I'm one of the best performers in the world. Like being with Buster and Spliff, I was watching their performance and watching. 50's performance, because you know everybody's really there to see Fifth, and Buster was, you know, one of the acts. He's great, great performance, but I'm watching it and I realized that, like, doing the hype man shit, I'm as good as Spliff. Mm, okay. Like, at that. first yeah. I thought Spliff was, like, way better than me, because he's one of the greats when it comes to the hype man shit, Spliff, Flavor Flav. But for me, I looked at it as, like, I'm as good as him. Because I kept my energy up for 103 shows. They didn't do 103 shows, but I kept my energy up. And one of the toughest performances for me was Denver. I see how the Denver Nuggets went in Salt Lake City. It was 100 and something. felt like 180 or 100 degrees out there. And then in Denver, you could feel the altitude. Like, you could feel the breathing. You know what I mean? Thailand, different places. You, you go into all these different places, and you got to really... You got to be mentally ready for it and physically ready for it.
Well, I remember at the start of the tour, like I think when 50 announced they sold like 840,000 tickets mm -hmm. uh, on the first week and everyone's going crazy. Yeah. You know, I think he uh, went on social media. He said, uh, you think this is something? Wait till they see the Lloyd Banks tour and the Straight Outta Cashville tour. Oh, I didn't know that. I don't want to get into that. <laughs> I don't need nobody mad at me. <laughs> shout to them, shout to, shout to them, but I don't need nobody mad. I didn't even know he did that. I didn't even yeah. know. I didn't even know he said that. I mean, what's the reason why Banks and um, Young Buck is not on this tour? Because I think that would have been I even crazy. I don't want to get into Banks because Banks is my guy, and mm -hmm. he really don't like you. Yeah, I heard you. So I know he, he don't. He, he no, 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 no. I'm just keeping real. I don't want to like you. Fine. So That's so fine. we just keep that. So look, with, with Buck, I told you, like, with Buck, is it, it really not no smoke. When you look at Buck, Buck kind of, everything was kind of more on him. Well, he just announced that he's selling his catalog or something like that. I don't see. I don't even that's, know. That's I don't, I don't saying, communicate yeah. with Buck. For me, I didn't grow up with Buck. I grew up with Banks and Fifty. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I didn't grow up with Buck. I didn't grow up with Game. You know, and to me, it's all love. I like I just said to you, I seen Game interview with you, and he ain't disrespect me at all. At all. And I won't disrespect him. All my saying, all I'm saying to you is, it's all about getting money at this point. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, we to an age where you got to act your age. You understand what I'm saying? But all in all, I'm just telling you that, like, I am like I just made six figures off this tour. I'm great. Like, I'm straight. I don't have no beef with anybody. I'm just in it to win it. That's it. And I'm just telling you that with, with G-Unit, G-Unit was one of the biggest groups in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, you had G-Unit video games. We had socks, cereal, wife beaters, sneakers, whatever you name it, we had it. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and 50, it was he was one of the... One a genius when it comes to marketing. Look what he's doing with TV right now. I can't keep my eyes off Kanan. <laughs> Shout out to everybody on that. I'm missing BMF. I can't wait till that come back. Mm -hmm. They got two chains, little baby and sweetie on that. So oh yeah, looking, right. Yeah, I heard about that. I'm looking forward towards that. He's he's a genius. Yeah, I mean, look, I am cool. I'm just trying to work like that. Yeah, l listen, I, I am cool, and we're not going to edit this part out. I am cool with everyone in G Unit, including Fifty, including you including Young Buck, including Game. Uh, Lloyd Banks has an open invitation to come to Vlad TV at any point in time. He yeah, knows Lloyd that. Banks is the type of dude he don't even want to be mentioned. Like, okay, well, and, I'm, I'm going to mention him. You know, I got nothing negative to say about him, regardless of what was said about me. He has an open invitation. I'm a fan of Lloyd Banks. I've interviewed him. In fact, the very first time that Vlad TV got said on video was you and Lloyd Banks. Was the interview I did with both of y'all? Remember at yeah, G Unit Office? That was yeah, that was years ago. That yeah, was fifteen years that. ago. That was fifteen years ago. You've been in the game for a long time. Yes, well, I was doing DVDs before that, of so course. even longer than that. You know, the I know that. You know, you, yeah, of course you know that. But we everyone else got to know that. So, so Banks, we all know you a pillar in hip hop, bro. You, you Banks, you whatever you feel like, you know, what I mean, whatever you feel, you can come to Vlad TV and you'll get nothing but love over here. For sure. For Shout sure. to Banks. Banks is my guy, but yep. I didn't even know that was said by Fifty. Yeah, he said that. I don't want to talk about 50 too much. Okay. Um, well, you had the number one interview on Drink Champs. Definitely. Shout to, shout to shout Nori. Shout to Nori. And you and Nori back cool. So me that's and Nori great. are back cool. Me and Nori, years ago, mm -hmm. this was maybe about three years ago, we had this dumbass argument with that was about a whole lot of nothing. It was two men whose egos were out of control. Right. Both, I know, do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? Kind of type dumb shit. And then we stopped talking for years and years. And then I remember I reached out to him, like I think last year, and he reached back, and we've kind of been texting each other here and there. And we finally got on the phone together, and you know, on FaceTime, and we had a cool ass conversation. And you're going to see good, me on man. Drink Champs in the near future. Yeah, as soon as I go to Miami, you will see DJ Vlad on Drink Champs. DJ Flat on Drink Champs. Yeah. Everybody claps that, man. Yes. That's, that's that, is, that is official. That's big. I, that, and that I, and I would love to see Nori on Vlad. Yeah, Nori's been you on know, Vlad. And he'll cool. probably come back after I do Drink Listen, Champs. Listen, man, I'm a fan of everybody with this podcast mm -hmm. shit because how far y'all took it, which is you, which is Nori, which is Gillian Wallow, mm -hmm. which is Joe Buttons, yep. which is Rory and Mal. Academics. Um, academics. Adam 22. Adam 22, of course. Yep. You know, it's like the list could go on and on. Uh, even we could put Carisha on there. I'm not hating on her. Her show, she won two awards. You got <laughs> Carisha. Yeah. Who else you got? You got um, Tasha K. Yep. I know Cardi B hates her, but mm -hmm. Tasha K, she do be uh, yeah, she, in a, she do makes be a lot good. of noise. Then you got Shay Shay now. 
Yep. The Shannon Cat Williams Sharp. interview just went yep. crazy. I need to get all Shay Shay, man. Yeah. You know, we could I remember when he just he just talked about Khaled uh, not shaking my hand and that went kind of viral. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. All right, um, yeah. you know, but what what's yeah. interesting is when you posted that you had the number one uh interview mm-hmm. on Dream Champs. And by the way, you there was a lot of competition on. They had Kanye on there, they had Kodak Black on there. They had a lot of right, big right. names on. So congrats on that. That's right. Thank congrats. you, man. You know Appreciate what I'm it. Saying? Oh, it's good, man. Yes. You know, it's been and a good I, and I would like to take credit for the first person to actually bring you on an interview platform no, after many years that's of being why, silent. That's why I always, I appreciate Vlad. Everywhere I go overseas, Vlad, Vlad, Thank Vlad. You. That's, Thank that's you. really Thank what you. they so talk when I, about. So when I so. see you continuing to elevate and continue to do big Definitely. shows, you know, I, I feel proud of my contribution to your success. I feel blessed. I just feel like it was time for me, you know, to start working. And I feel like, you know, these podcasts are a good platform now. Like mm-hmm. for, for everybody, for artists, for actors. It's like, you know, you want to go see, uh, you could go on Ellen, you could go on all these other shows, but it's like the podcast is major shit now. Yep. You know, yep. everybody want to come on these platforms and tell a story and people want to hear about, you know, night fights and all kind of shit. And, you know, because, you know, G-Unit was the craziest. Well, right, because I was about so, to mention is that when you did a post on your Instagram about having the number one show on Drink Champs, Fat mm-hmm. Joe actually commented and said, you deserve that our era is still the most engaging. We really had wars. Yeah, definitely, we did. You know, and you've said on my show before that the Terror Squad beef was probably oh, the most definitely. serious I'm, beef that G Unit yeah, ever had. He had some, you know, he had them Bronx crazy Spanish niggas with him. You know, and it's like with, with Fat Joe and like anything in hip hop get real. You know that. Like my mom's crib been shot up before. We done been in night fights with Suge and all kinds of shit. You know what I'm saying? So you, you know where hip hop is now. But when you look at the drill, motherfuckers are just. You don't know everybody just getting hit with that. That's different. It's like it's not a personal beef. The drill shit, motherfuckers got a. It's more of a gang thing, cause New York City is more gang. It's it's the most gang activity you've seen in your life being in New York. For me, for me being in New York City, this is the most gang activity. You can't tell a blood, a crip, a Dominican gang, and you can't tell them that they not what they are. And I don't give a fuck where they go. L. A. Chicago. Motherfuckers are really banging out here now. So it's like, the drill is kind of different. Our beefs were more a little personal. Like, it was more on site. Like, it's who catch who. I mean, when you and Terror Squad were going at it, what do you think was the most serious situation you guys ever got into? I think just fucking with Fat Joe, period. Because like I said, it, it, he had powers to be. He had DJ Khaled. So meanwhile, I got to go do radio. You know what I'm saying? I, my promo shit is getting ripped down in Miami. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you beef with certain niggas, they got a certain kind of power. I didn't feel like Ja Rule had that kind of power, but I felt like Fat Joe had that kind of power. You know what I'm saying? Fat Joe had Khaled, and he had a whole bunch of other niggas in Miami he fuck with. So niggas was ripping down my promo picks. I couldn't go over there and get my record spent. So the beef does affect the business. Right. And then there was times where Hip Hop Police, you know, G on it, don't let these other rap groups fool you. We was number one on the list with 50. So we was number one on Hip Hop Police list with 50. They'll follow me all the way home, very far. Mm. They used to follow me around Manhattan. They used to jump in the cars, search the cars, find weed, look for the guns. That was the first thing. When I go to Queens, star my name. I had an Escalade, went to Queens. They took the truck. You mm-hmm. know why they took the truck? Because when I go to Queens, yo, why you not in the hood? Because they going to wind my shit. They going to check my shit to see if it got stash box or anything in it. I got a star next to my name when I go to Queens. Crazy. And it's just because of my status. As well as 50, as well as Banks, as well as any nigga. They going to they gonna take your car. They took my Escalade, ripped it up, and they wound that bitch to see if I got the stash box in it. When you say ripped it up, they actually... Ripped out panels and nah, stuff like that? No, just, you know, they just left shit fucked up. Go through your glove compartment, but you could tell they wanted the truck. Because they yeah. had my shit for about an hour. I had to escalate. Okay. And then when Hip Hop Police, it was to a point where we knew everybody. I, Superman, they said Superman passed away. Superman was a tall white dude, no joke. He'll grab you by your belt, drab, grab you out the truck. He grabbing you straight for your belt, check for your waist. He don't care nothing about guns. You could have fucking weed there, whatever. You know what I'm saying? A knife, but if he just coming straight for guns, then you had Curly Top, or he retired. He's screamed on Pete Diddy before. Curly Top, that shit was viral. That's the black dude with the curly hair. He knew he knew everybody. He'll come out and just call your, call your man named Nickname out. 
So hip hop police, them niggas was like the motherfucking Ghostbusters. Them niggas just popped out of nowhere. <laughs> Ghostbusters! Them niggas, you had a pistol on you at that time and you was G on it? Niggas was on you. Mm. It was different. Like, well, DJ Khaled, he did an interview with Shannon Sharp. He talked about that incident at right. the radio station. He basically said that he is so close to Fat Joe and he's just the definition of loyalty is that when you showed up and you went to go shake his hand, he just put his hands up and said, That's I can't I shake said your I hand. respected it. That's why I told Nelson, Money Nels, I know you know yeah, Nels. I know, I know Nelson. I told Nelson, Let's, this is not a fucking great idea. But oh, so some, you already knew coming into it. I knew that before I even came in there. I was like, yo, this is not, this is Fat Joe, man. We in the midst of beef with Fat Joe. Fat Joe, this his man, jeez. This nigga had a TS piece. Don't forget. Oh, so right Khaled, there in front of you, he had a TS piece. I don't think, I don't even remember that, but I know he had a TS yeah, piece. Yeah, he definitely had one. Yeah. So he was Terror Squad, and that showed Fat Joe power. So I told Nels. Nels felt like he had a relationship with Khaled. When I told him when it came to me, Nigga, I'm the nigga that got banned from MTV. Nigga, like, yo, this nigga slapped the kid. Yo, put let let him um he got a hide in the back. I never forgot that. Chris Lighty, MTV, 50 of them hit me in the back. This nigga, yo, stay in the back. You just slapped. Even Chris Lighty didn't want me to come around for the bad press. That could have been the amp. <laughs> Rest in peace to Chris Lighty. He probably because that's a smart move. Yo, he's in a newspaper for slapping the kid. We don't want him on the red carpet. Let him hide in the back. Worse enough, when I got arrested, I had a vitamin water hat on. That was crazy. See, <laughs> I didn't understand business then. Okay. You know what so, I'm so what exactly happened? You go to shake his hand, and he puts oh, his hand up and was like... I go to shake his hand, and he's like, get the fuck out of here type shit. Oh, he said that? Yeah. Okay. And then his man, I ain't going to say no name. You know, I ain't going to say nothing else because I don't want to... But, like, words are exchanged. You eat bullets in here type shit. That's what my people said, and words are exchanged, and, you know... So that interview obviously never happened. Hell no, it didn't happen. <laughs> I told him it wasn't a good idea from the from the first place. Yeah. And you know, when Khaled did the interview, he said that before all this happened, he was begging Fat Joe to end this beef. He was like, we don't need this. Like, this is not necessary. This is hurting everybody. Like, please nah, just Nah, but Fat Joe was a gangster. 50's exactly. a gangster. P Pistol Pete's a gangster. All them niggas, hard boy, all them niggas he got around, them niggas was gangsters, nigga. Yeah. So, and, and niggas that surround us was gangsters too. So, as well as us. So, so when you look at it, it, it could have got real at any moment. But at the same time, when you look back, you're like, yo, nobody really got hurt. No shots is really fired at each other too much. And everything is kind of good. So, rest in peace to Chris Lighty, because Chris Lighty was the pillar of all this. Let's not forget who Chris Lighty had under his umbrella. 50, Buster, Diddy. K Slay, who else? LL, Foxy. Yeah, everybody. Damn that, everybody in the everybody. industry was under Chris Lighty. Yep. Before there was a Rock Nation, before there was a 300, and shout to them companies, not hate him. But, nigga, it was a Chris Lighty. Well, you know, speaking of Fat Joe, you know, he actually lost a lot of weight recently. You see this new picture of him? Come on, that's Jay to pick a stop. <laughs> I don't know why Jay to took that picture, man. Didn't it look like Fat Joe, though, at first nah, glance? Nah, everybody was saying that. That's the crack up, though. <laughs> I don't know what Jada doing in that picture, man. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. You being with 50 from day one, mm -hmm. and 50 basically saying, at, at, at all points that I've known of 50 and known 50, yeah. he didn't give a fuck about beefing with anybody. At any point, you being his man, did you ever try to talk him out of certain beefs? Be like, you know, fifth, this, nah, this ain't just, necessary. You know what I realized? That the, the industry is is really fake relationships. Hollywood, all this shit, it's all kind of like fake. People are really not your friends. It's just business. So I think he knew that ahead of time from being on Columbia after he got shot. Niggas was like staying away from him and fuck you, you're over. And I, you just realize it's business. Hmm. Some people get in a mix and think, take it personal and think everything is love. With everybody. And certain people, it is love. You know, but I feel like when I look at the industry, I look at everybody got to pick a side, nigga. You either fucking with this person or that person, or you want to be in the middle, which is neutral. I ain't got nothing to do with it. And I understand that. But in all actuality, when it comes to this business, you got to pick a side, my nigga. That's the unfortunate part That's of hip-hop. It's hard to be neutral. Yeah. It's hard. 
is hard. I've tried my best, but sometimes I get dragged into one side of things. Right. You know, no matter how hard I try, it'll be like, oh, okay, you were this person, then I can't fuck with you. Yeah, but it's you like, well, I just interview them. Well, now you were this person. If you do this person, this person. It's not going to fuck with you. It's not going to do business if you do business with exactly. this person. You know how it is. So it's like, motherfuckers all choose a side. They just don't want to admit it. Yeah. And then when you down, of course, niggas ain't fucking with you. But you up, niggas might, niggas might fuck with you a little bit. Yeah. That's in my eyes. Right. You know what I'm saying? But being being down with 50, we always had beef with everybody. So I was just a nigga that stood to myself. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have fake industry friends. You got niggas in the streets that's fake, that did fuck shit. That's just how life is. You just got to focus on yourself. Mm-hmm. Once I started focusing on myself, everything gets better for me. You know what I'm saying? Well, Dr. Umar Johnson did an interview recently with Joe Budden mm-hmm. where he said that Eminem can't be one of the greatest rappers of all time because he's now black. I, I don't agree with that. And I fuck with Dr. Umar, but I don't have to agree with everything he say. But I don't agree with that. Eminem in my top five. Right. Of MCs. And that's not because I'm down with him and not because you got the free Yayo shirt on. <laughs> it don't have nothing to do with that. I was an Eminem fan once I heard Renegade. That was it for me. Once I heard him rhyme against Jay, and then who do you think? Who do you think had the better verse? I'm gonna say M. Yeah, for me, I think most people said M. I remember like, me and Matt Hoffa arguing about this. Oh, you just saying that because because Nas said Matt that in Ether. from Brooklyn though, and I'm so like, you know oh, he's yeah, going okay, side yeah, with Jay. Right, so exactly, right. It's there cool. You go. I forgot about that part. Niggas say, you know, New York niggas going side with their borough. Jesus. Right. That's just I, I forgot about the Brooklyn is. connection. You're Brooklyn. absolutely right. They going side with their borough. So right. well, I mean, regardless me, of who you think did better. No one could say that M did not hold his own against Jay Z, who's M, definitely a goat. M always hold his own, but then when I seen M with Fifty, like do shows with Fifty, and was hearing how he was coming, and like I said, the uh, pause, like I said, um, when I heard the footsteps from many men, he got that from Poltergeist or something. Like M, M and M is like nobody want to battle that nigga. Right? Didn't he show up to the Detroit show? Yeah, he came out, and the crowd went. The crowd went fuck. ballistic. <laughs> Right, because Eminem doesn't even really do shows anymore. Imagine if he did. Yeah. How much you think M won the show? A couple I'm million? I'm pretty sure he turned. Five was... million, maybe? <laughs> Ten million for one show? <laughs> I mean, you'd have to do, what, the O2 Arena to get that type Come of money? On, but bro. I mean, it's not like he can't if fill him, the O2. Listen, if, if, if M, 50, Dre... Or Snoop, any one of them three, you would say Flav or two, was to come outside overseas. Nah, you even, fifty needed bigger arenas, motherfucker. We was doing arenas. We was doing double dates. Where we did double dates at? And I'm not even gonna say we. I'm gonna say fifty because these are his shows. Yeah. But how a, a lot of places we had to do the, 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 you did like the, four shows in London. This is what I'm saying. The arena wasn't big enough to even hold fifty. Mm. So if you got an arena that's holding 15,000, he's doing that two, three times because the arena's not enough. Mind, mind you, the biggest arena I think over there is in Paris, and that shit hold 34,000, 40,000? Yeah. 34 to 40,000. I think he did that twice. Crazy. Crazy. I mean, listen, I, I don't think you could deny Eminem his GOAT status if you look at listen, skill, fi- if listen, you look when, at album sales, if you look at shows. Listen, when you every when every you, type when of you, when you look at Eminem as a whole, think about what he did. Look, niggas, I went platinum. Buck went platinum. Game went platinum. 50 sold 10, 20, 30 million, some shit like that. First album sold another more than Get Rich or Die Trying to Massacre. M sold 16 million. Um, D12 fucking went well, platinum. double platinum. Yeah, multi platinum. The Bank for Mercy sold three million. Um, then you look at Slaughterhouse. I don't know what they sold Joe Buttons in them, but by that time numbers was different. But I'm Slaughterhouse did. They made shows. They got they got kind of big. Oh yeah. Or for Eminem, shout to Joe Ortiz, Joe Buttons, Crooked Eye, all of them. Eminem. Then even when you look at fucking um Griselda. Yeah, that's their all brand under Eminem's, is big all right under now. Eminem's umbrella. That's all under Eminem umbrella. Yes. Yes. Because yeah, when, you... when it comes to the number one MCs in the top five, you, you got to throw, we got to throw, you can't say, oh, this rapper's bigger than this rapper when this rapper's doing arenas and this rapper's doing clubs. Right. I can't say I'm bigger than Eminem or 50 if I'm doing club runs. Yeah. Which ain't nothing wrong because that's what I'm doing. Right. You know what I'm saying? But if this nigga's doing it's a, it's a different caliber. arenas and stadiums, if he's selling out 
fucking um, Detroit Lions Stadium on anger management, Detroit Lions Stadium, Yeah. right? If he's doing numbers like that, who the fuck are me to say I'm better than this nigga? You can feel like that because every artist feel like they Superman when they put their suit on. No, no problem. I feel like that too. But all in all, there's a difference between club runs and stadium runs. The money's different. Yeah. Nigga might be getting five million, ten million to appear somewhere. Yeah, I mean, if M went on tour, he'd be doing like Taylor Swift. Numbers. Come on. I just was on tour. When we was in Australia, they said Taylor Swift was coming out there. I was talking to one of the guys from production. He was staying in a hotel. Come on, bro. They said she's doing like 100,000 people, geez. Yeah. Eminem could do that. I'm thinking two nights. Eminem could do that. Or one night, 100,000 people. Mm-hmm. 50 could do it. Yeah. Snoop could do it. Dre could do it. Yep. 50 could do that. 50 just did. He just proved to you he could do that. He just 103 dates. Like I said, shit, we had to do three shows because some arenas are not big enough. Well, I remember on huh? Dream Champs, you talked about the, uh, the situation... Uh, when you guys were filming in the club, mm-hmm. and Suge Knight showed up, right, and Eminem, he came outside. He came outside. He was ready to take He's on from whatever. Detroit. Know what I'm saying? I, let me tell you, just because you a white boy from Detroit, that don't mean you tough. I know a real tough Nick. My man Matt, he a white boy, tough. My man Littles, he's black, but Detroit, it's it's like anywhere else. It's a hard upbringing. Niggas don't get silver spoons too many. So niggas got to learn how to grind and how to hustle. And not saying everything's illegal. I'm talking about Detroit niggas. They know when they come out of town, they got their diamonds and their buffs. <laughs> Motherfuckers is clean. Right. Niggas from the hood. Right. When you look at Doug and all these other niggas, niggas got chains, eight watches, even 42 twin niggas, you know, love a niggas. 42 Doug. Yeah, 42 Doug is 42 twin too. Oh, twin? He okay. just came home. There's, oh, okay. a, there's a lot it. of get money niggas in them streets, bro. Got it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, but look. You just because you're from Detroit, Detroit is a tough place no, to come up, it. motherfucker. Like, don't say that he ain't come up in the hood. He came outside. Right. So Shook showed up with a bunch of Mexican mafia dudes. Yeah, I think they 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 not nah, they they tattoo said 118th Street. That's what I remember. That's okay, the first time it. I seen a tattoo on a motherfucking forehead and face like that. Got it. Before training day and all that shit came out. So that he came out with a bunch of Mexican gang members. Yeah. And then what? He he lit a cigar. He lit a cigar and he put, um, walked around. Okay. And everyone was just ready to go at that point with y'all. I mean, yeah, what the fuck? It, there's, there's no choice right now. Whatever happened, happened from here. We're going to come outside. Right. Because uh, you basically said, um, you say, you know, you were like, damn, what do we got to lose? If we don't pop up now, we're going back to the hood. Yo, listen, so. yeah, it, listen, when, when, there's, when, there's, when there's no plan B, it's just plan A. This used to 50 say, what are we going to do? Sell drugs? I could have been just a nigga that sold drugs in the hood. No no career, no job, right. no no WT, no nothing. Right. You'd probably be dead by now. Yeah, sold or, drugs or in, in the hood, locked up, you know what I'm saying? Or still be in the hood doing nothing. You know, and, and that's nothing right. It's, it's nothing wrong with that. Some niggas, that's just their destiny. You understand? Because I believe in God and destiny and every everything is planned out for you. Really? You know what I'm saying? I, I, yeah. I believe, now, I believe listen, you could you could And I don't like to get too religious because they say media training never get religious, never talk okay. about politics. But I believe in God and I believe everything is okay. planned out for you. All right. So for me, I look at it like it's a blessing. Like where we come from, me, 50 Banks from Southside Jamaica, shit is real. Shit is real in Brooklyn, shit is real in the Bronx, shit is real. So if you see any success. Just a little big success out of the hood, you happy for a nigga. But what we did was 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 phenomenal because of Eminem and Dr. Dre, you know, and, and Jimmy Iovine and the Interscope Machine. It was it was a handful, and of course, Fifty being a genius to take that deal, you know. Well, wasn't Game in the music video for in the club? I believe so. Right. But so when Suge showed up and all that crazy no, was shows, game, I don't think game. I don't think game was in the club video. No, he said I he was in the video. I, I th- matter of fact, I saw him in the video. But I don't think he was there. I don't. He must oh, have maybe not it was been multiple, there. Was it multiple days of shooting? Yeah, I, I don't think. I don't remember him being there. Okay, during that. I Shug remember me and game in the studio. Okay, but we was in Dre's studio. Well, you said that Eminem has diss records on everybody in the stash. I mean, I'm not saying it's confirmed. I don't want to talk for him, but I I believe like if you ever try to diss him, he got 
shit in the stash. He's that type of writer. If he ever think you were supposed to flip, I don't think he got this record so it's 50 or Dre or nobody or me. Bro. Right. But if you ever was trying to flip, like, come on, look at the whole Source Magazine thing, man. Like, well, that was crazy. Game dissed Eminem on a song called The Black Slim Shady. Right. You heard it? Yeah. What'd you think? How can you diss Eminem? He sold 16 million records. Yeah, I don't think there was a response from Eminem. You know what I'm saying? It's all it's all about to me, it's like like I said, from no disrespect to game, but can game fill the arena right now? M can. It's it's levels to this shit, nigga. Is I mean, you, this game, game definitely has a real fan base, but it's not an Eminem fan base. Game is nice. And game understands Look, that. Game is nice. Banks yeah. is nice. I mm -hmm. always think they they was good rappers. Buck is nice. Banks was always my favorite though. I felt like Banks was a little more lyrical in game. Game to me had a great situation at the time. Because like I said, Dre was under the pressure, not under pressure, but Dre was, if you in the studio from the West Coast, you gotta kinda blow a West Coast nigga up after what you just did to 50. 50 the biggest nigga at the rap game at that time. So what I'm saying is game had a lovely situation. Cause you had Dr. Dre Beats there and you had the hottest niggas in the fucking world right there to give you the assist. Yeah. Here, nigga. Right. I mean, I just had Game on my show, as you know, we talked about this, and he basically said that Dre was put in a situation where he had to choose, and ultimately there was a lot more that's money on, the, on, the, on the 50 Cent look, side. That's not, that's not the situation. The situation is money and egos. Niggas was making money, even I had an ego. I thought I was unstoppable, throwing milkshakes, niggas in McDonald's at Burger King. I thought I was better than anybody. Fuck, fuck, see Jimmy Henchman, don't shake his hand. Fuck out of here, nigga. I'm that nigga. Nigga, I got Bentleys outside. I got 50,000 in my car, in my pocket. I'm running around with niggas like Maserati Fox, other crazy niggas. All around the world, man. Police locking me up in the airport. Yo, you slapped Jimmy Hitchman's son coming back from Africa. My life a movie. My shit like a Tupac. You know what I'm saying? I just don't praise the shit. It was just money and ego. I had money. I just got out of jail. I'm fucking eating. I got, I come on my condo. I'm looking at Battery Park. 50 made me rich. I'm like, oh shit, and I ain't even dropped an album yet. Mm. So I'm looking at this shit. Banks got all these rings and shit on his fingers coming to see me in jail. So I'm like, damn, nigga, we made it. I never thought we was going to make it. I Sometimes I'm still in another world when I go to fucking Australia and people be like, I'm like, what the fuck is this guy looking at? You had your baby was actually born while you were locked yes, up. Yes, I was on Rikers Island. I saw yeah. my birth certificate in, in the visiting room. But what I'm saying to you, I'm going to save it for the book. But what I'm saying to you is, um, sometimes when I'm in Australia or in Africa and somebody know me, it's still a high for me. Right. I think it's a high for everyone who does the types of things that we do. When I'm in New Orleans and people are constantly coming up to me asking for pictures. It's, it's crazy because you, it, it, it feels, you know, it feels you, good because you, you know, know you, you've worked for that. Right. And you know why artists you know, feel, you I'm going to tell you why artists feel wow. Because sometimes you could go back to your neighborhood, go certain places, and people treat you regular. But when you go overseas, man, motherfuckers rolling out the red carpet for you, yo. Yeah, especially Australia. Yo, come to my restaurant. Yeah, when I come went on, on tour my... in Australia, it was nuts when come I was in Come on my yacht. Yo, bro, I'm going to send you three phantoms. Huh. My man Daryl, his man out there he worked for, got 130 cars. Tony Moore hooked us up, sent five phantoms for them. Come to the club. 20 Don Julios. Like they just, it's, it's just a different love. So sometimes you'll come back and I love New York. New York is, you know, it made us, but you'll come back here and it's like, I love it. But at the same time, I got to get back like this. Throw the Pooh Shiesty back on and be on point. You know what I mean? It's New York. Look, I, I had Game on recently. From your point of view, because everyone's going to have a different version of the story, but right. Game's first album was such a success. It was his biggest project ever. Not to say he didn't have other successful projects, because he did. But that first album was incredible, and 50 had an ex extremely strong role in who, it. We even who, talked about who, how... Who oh, was, hold on, who was on that first album? No, no. Who was on that first album? You were on that first album. Who's the only one from June that was on the first album? You and 50. Right? Yeah. It wasn't Game. wasn't Buck. Right? It was Yayo. What, what do you mean? Well, I'm I mean, about it wasn't Buck. It wasn't album. Banks. Correct. It was Yayo. Right. So for me, I love Game for putting me on that album. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm running is one of my favorite shits, right? But all I'm saying is, you had Dr. Dre, you had 50. A nigga don't ever want to feel like he's under somebody. Cool. That's how certain niggas feel. 
Because when he did the interview with you, he was like, I respect Yayo for his position. I'm just not like that. Um, I want to be bigger. But you're not bigger than 50, no homo. You're not bigger than 50, you're not bigger than Eminem. You dropped a 20 minute Eminem record and nobody really paid attention to it. But that first album went number one on Billboard in I'm all not, genres. Listen, I'm not hate. I was on genres. the album, so I can't hate. Right, right. And, and like. The but, album was dope, but what I'm saying was dope. is. And 50 had a very important role in that how album. Many, look, oh, hold on, now, let look, me just say now, this. That, now that goes back to when I was in Battery Park and I came home. And this is word to everything I love. And 50 played me six records that was on a documentary with just him. Yeah. No game. So Fifth gave him six hits, which he could have. Oh, so, so those records were done and Game jumped on. Okay, I see what you're saying. Because even, and, and Game actually admitted this during our interview. For example, like the song Special, which has Nate Dogg on the hook. Originally, it was 50 on the hook. But basically, Listen, the aftermath, I'm telling uh, you, look. A- Angelo Sa- uh, Sanders basically said, we didn't want it to look like a 50 Game collab album, so they had to take 50 off certain songs and put like Nate Dogg on it to Listen, make it to all I'm have telling more you is when it. I oh, when I got out of jail, I heard them songs. Um, this how we do. I heard all that shit on the balcony of my shit, and the nigga said, "I'm giving this shit to Game," and I said, "You giving this to this nigga? You sure? Because you know I'm a nigga that could pick records. I picked many men. So when I heard and Fifty didn't like that record. No, he didn't like it at and all. And that ended up being, I think, over time, just like one just of the like, biggest records off that album. Just like the beef with. With Fat Joe was another thing. You ain't have Khaled. You didn't have Cool and Dre. Like, so we had words, but them niggas, as producer wise, hated or love it. They go on the history of hip hop with that beat. Correct. That was Cool and Dre. So that, you that was even, Game's biggest song, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And who got it? Who 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 got the beat? Who wrote it? Fifty. I could take you higher. Fifty. I heard all that on there. And no disrespect to Game. Like I said, he didn't come up here and disrespect me. At but all. the truth is the truth. 50 wrote, the 50 wrote, helped you write the records, right? He helped you. The records were built already. And Dre had to fucking chef shit up. Mm-hmm. You had Dr. Dre. Then you had Cool and Dre and other break. And don't get me wrong. He's a dope MC. When it comes to game, you can't forget what he did for L.A. You can't forget what Banks did for New York. Right, because at the Hold time, on. at the Look. time, the West Coast was cold. Right. And game brought you it back. Can't, you can't. One thing about G-Unit is niggas stood their own. Mm-hmm. Game hold his own. When I heard him on, when I was in jail, and I heard him on that first freestyle, um, where I'm from, he killed that. That's when people started. That's what really started building game up. The mixtape buzz. So all him blowing up comes from Fifty. Right, yeah, he, he showed up free, on one of your mixtapes before the, the I album was in dropped. jail. His first yeah. freestyle was where I'm from freestyle. That's where I heard it in jail. That shit was buzzing. Niggas was fucking with game, and I understand game. He didn't know niggas like that, so he didn't have to have loyalty to niggas like that. But Fifty's crazy, and it is what it is. He wanted shit his way, and he ruled with an iron fist. Everybody know that. What game contributed to the West Coast was great. What Banks contributed to New York City. One of the best lyrics, it was great. What Buck did for the South was great because he was first one of the first niggas. I remember Buck brought out Jeezy. Mm. This one Jeezy had the the um, Manny Fresh shit. Oh, yeah. First uh, of all, how the- dun, dun, stack my chin. G- we brought out Jeezy on anger management, nigga, on our stage. Mm. Buck brought him out. So what I'm saying is what everybody did, they contributed. Free AO shit, I contributed for all the niggas locked up in jail. That's a nigga coming home, coming home straight, coming home straight to the studio, straight to a deal, straight to everything. So the jail community loved me, the whole free AO thing, the movement at the Grammys. You know what I'm saying? But skills pay the bills. Yep. Skills pay the bills. Yeah, and listen, Game in our interview said that 50 needs a guy like Tony Yeo around him who's just loyal I think that uh, as far as loyalty goes, uh, you Yayo might be the poster boy for what 50 was looking for. Yayo held 100%. it down the whole time. And so I, I commend and I salute, I salute, like literally salute Yayo for holding his man down. That's his man. It, 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 it don't even have to do with no loyalty. It should be like Meech said, no man is above any other man. That's why people like Big Meech. Because when he was around niggas, he was the type of nigga. I got short niggas, small niggas, tall niggas, pause, all, all type of yeah, niggas I around that, me. I remember that. You remember yeah. that video he yeah. had pause, but like he he didn't knock niggas near him. Yeah. 
like I said, and same thing with five and other niggas. We in the best hotels in the world. I shit you not. Other rappers, trust me, they're not doing that. I don't want to say no names, but they're not doing that. But we in a mining hotel, Four Seasons, Ritz, yep. W, complimentary breakfast. You mm-hmm. eat croissants and, you know, all the portions are smaller overseas. <laughs> right. Yeah, you ain't going to catch no Jamaican food overseas. I extend the rights. No. Only in London. Right. But when you go to Australia, you ain't catching no nah. beef patty with cocoa bread. No. It ain't going down like that. You ain't catching none of that. I mean, from your point of view, mm-hmm. and me and you had a conversation about right. this off, you know, off, you know, record. Mm-hmm. Do you feel that the reason why the game in Fifty shit never really got resolved was because Jimmy Henchman was managing game? I always tell you this, man. Jimmy Henchman never liked Chris Lighty, and that's all you had to know. To me, he never liked Chris Lighty. He never, he never liked niggas and. You know, it's always a nigga to throw poison at some shit when everybody's getting money. You know what I'm saying? That's just how it is. A nigga gonna be in your ear and, you know, but that's the devil, my nigga. Like, a nigga in your ear telling, yo, you bigger than these niggas. And, and, and it's the same niggas that put you on. So when you go to radio and you say, I made the fries and the cheeseburgers, nah, you just be humble and say, yo, you just so... A million, you just number one on Billboard. God bless you. You know, just be humble. But when you when you get money, and, and this is a lot of things, like w- with a younger artist now, like if I tell a young artist, yo, chill. Yo, don't do that because the police is watching you. The feds going to snatch you up. Y'all niggas getting bodies. You on the phones. You doing this and that. Man, yo, yo, what you know? I got more money than you, nigga. <laughs> What you talk? What you saying? Hey man, wisdom goes a long, I'm long way. To you, age goes a long and way. And that's how I was when I was in my twenties. Yeah. So a nigga tell me now, nigga, what you talking about? I need it now, nigga. Yo, feds, what? Well, fuck it, I do the time. Hmm. I know what I got myself into. That's what a young nigga going to tell you. Yeah, uh, and you know, just 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 be happy that we to the age where it's still relevancy. Yeah. And we still can get money. We're still but alive. We're still we, getting money. But a big part of why we're relevant is 50 Cent, Eminem, and Dr. Dre. Right. And, you know, for example, when Wack started managing game, and I mm-hmm. just had Wack on my show as well, me and him right. wanted a 10-year-old beef that was over a bunch right. of dumb shit too. Wack was trying to get 50 and game cool again. He even talked about a situation in L.A. where 50 was at a club, and him and Game pulled up, and Game and Fifty okay. had a conversation. Yeah. It seemed like some things might start actually happening, and then it all kind of fell apart. He also talked about a show. I mean, what, what was that other show? Because Wack mentioned this in our interview. There was a show that the promoter booked both Fifty and Game on the same venue. I, I don't know nothing about that because I wasn't there. Oh, you weren't there. Okay, nah, my so bad. I don't, I don't know about that. But I could just tell you this: we missed out on a lot of money, mm-hmm. and. When game had henchmen, yeah, the nigga that set up pop, yeah, I, I looked at shit funny. If I was an LA nigga, I wouldn't do it. So him having whack is, you know, it's more respectable because the nigga from LA, nigga, you know, he come from being around sugar, you know, you know. Yeah, shout out to whack man. Yeah, I mean, you I, know, th- there's you know, been a lot of yeah, whack. Whack is an entertainer. He's a good he, entertainment he is, man. on, on, Listen, on, me on the him, internet. Me and him got into it's funny. it. Funny. Me and him huh? got into it ten years ago, right? Ten years ago. I was uh, on a Ray J video set when they did I Hit It First, where they right. had this kind of like uh, Kim Kardashian lookalike. Right. The uh, the director invited me. You know, I was like, oh, just go ahead, take some behind the scenes pictures, whatever else. I didn't realize they're trying to keep the whole thing a secret. So when I put out the pictures, it became a big hoopla. And then Wack right. called me, and then you know he starts talking crazy to me over the phone. And I'm like, all right, I'm done. I don't get uh, with me. Right. I don't get well, no, caught. No, 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 I, let me just finish me, my story. I don't get caught up with niggas because. I stay to myself. Like, right. But, but but the whole point is that he he right. talked crazy to me over the phone. And I'm like, I'm not going to deal with this dude right. for 10 years. For 10 years, I just we just never talked. You know what I'm saying? And it got to the point where I was trying to do some business uh, with Game. And that's Game's manager. And without whack, it all kind of fell apart. So I'm like, okay, let me just call him and let's right. see where this goes. And we got on the phone and I'm like, look, we could sit here and argue over this 10-year-old situation. Or right. we could say... We've made millions of dollars since then. Right. That situation had no effect on right. our business moving forward. Right. And, you know, are we just going to get over it and actually, like, you know, get some money together? Right. He's like, you're right. Let's just get some money together. Yeah, because when you when you, when you you look at Wack, Wack don't give a fuck 
how nobody feel. That's what I think I like about him. Yeah. You know, and that's it. Whatever he do is his business. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's not my business. Like, like he'll say to a nigga, why you addressing me? Why you came on here? Like a nigga initiate shit with him first. You know what I'm saying? So, but he handled business. Like when you look at Blueface, Blueface know how to market himself. I don't yeah, care what nobody says. Blueface shit is crazy, yeah. And, and Krishan Rock yeah, and everything. Yeah, he blew yeah. up. His, his, his girl, he blew up. The girl, Krishan Rock, and she's marketing herself. They're making bags. Yeah. Then, then, then he spun around and marketed his baby mother. Yeah. When she got the Barbie song, which, come on, that shit, you gonna hear that shit in a club overseas. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised right now, the climate, when I'm overseas, I'm hearing, like, off a Drake album, I swear to God, I heard that sexy red song a million times overseas. Really? Out of Drake's album. Okay. So, like, I love songs on his album because Drake is, you know, he's one of the best rappers. Of course. But that sexy red song, because in a club, all you're going to hear is females. You're going to hear um, Tyler. You're going to hear Scissor. You're going to hear fucking sexy red like a motherfucker. You're going to hear Nicki, Cardi, Lotto. It's like a female driven base. Mm -hmm. Everything is female driven in the club. So overseas, because overseas you don't really hear too much. You're not gonna hear really drill like that. Maybe in London. Yeah. Cause I I, I noticed that music can be kind of like mind altering. Like when you go to Amsterdam and you go to the shops, everything is like a yeah psychedelic kind of yeah. <laughs> you just chilling. It's, it's everything is. You ain't gonna hear shoot 'em up. You ain't even gonna hear nothing, no aggressive G or nothing. It's it's kinda like laid back to set the mood when you were like in the coffee shops in Amsterdam. Shout out to the whole Amsterdam. I love it there, man. Well, you were on Dream Champs and you said that Big E is a better storyteller than Ice Cube. Mm -hmm. And Ice Cube went on Who Kids Show right. and he responded. Right. He said, It's subjective. You know, everybody got their favorites. I put my stories up against anybody and I have a bigger sample size. But right. at the end of the day, you know, everybody's going to have their different opinion. I love Biggie. I'm a fan of Biggie. Right. But I wrote records for Easy and NWA. And if you're talking right. about storytelling, well, hold on. Right. He said, and if you're talking about storytelling, are we talking about rhyming? Because I write movies too. So I'm a hell of a storyteller. I can All tell right. a damn story. Listen, so we're talking Ice about rap? Because that's just a portion Listen, of what I do. Ice Cube is an idol of mine. He's a genius. Yes. He's got movies. Agreed. He has the big three league. He's, he's a fucking genius. I don't have nothing against him. I, I I listen to you know I listen to Death Certificate more because more people was telling me you're crazy, you're crazy. Wait, you like Death Certificate better than America's Most Wanted? I wouldn't say that. But America's Most Wanted is my favorite. But Death Ice Cube Certificate, project. you know what's cool about the debate on 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 Drink Champs? It made me go listen to more Ice Cube. Okay, like shout to Vaughn from the Bay. He came in and he was like, "Nigga, you bugging? Like, don't get me wrong, mad nigga screamed on me. I was getting screamed on. <laughs> shout to Ice Cube, like." It was definitely a debate, you know, um, but he was playing Death Certificate. He was playing America's Most Wanted. Mm -hmm. And I, like he made me realize, yeah, Ice Cube is one of the dopest. But for Biggie, it's more impact maybe because I'm from New York. Yeah. That's what you got to remember. And Ice Cube, like the beef was like, that was like one of the first beefs you ever really seen was like, Tupac and Biggie, like, magazine, so, like, Vibe magazine, Source magazine, like, that was, like, one of the biggest things. You're talking like, about No Vaseline, the disc record? No, I'm just saying, when you look at Biggie and Tupac beef, okay. to me, that was, like, kind of a story, and they both died. And they which both we, died we within, regret. within six months of each other. Yeah, we regret, but that was kind of, like, a big time in hip-hop, geez. You was waiting to see what Tupac was going to say. You was waiting to see what Biggie was going to say. You, you know, well, Biggie, Biggie didn't really say much. He had a little subtle, you no, know. I think he said a lot. He, he said a, a He had a couple little lines. If we had twins, he'd probably have two pox. But there you go. But he didn't. He didn't do a but hit him up. Biggie, Biggie was so nice. This is what I'm saying about Biggie. He was so nice that he didn't really have to say a nigga name. He'll do what's beef, nigga. And what I'm saying to you is, when you look at Biggie as an all around package, don't get me wrong. NWA, they started, you know, the Raiders hats, the black look they had, they look for LA. But Biggie was. Versace? Come on. Jesus pieces? Come on. Versace, Coogee had niggas wearing Coogee. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nigga was just that nigga smoking that good weed. He was the first fat nigga besides Heavy D to be super cool. Right. I had Special Ed on my show mm -hmm. recently. 
And he Shout feels special ed, Shout out special ed, another legend. One of my favorite in, in fact, my first interview I ever did in life, my first hip hop interview ever in life was with Special Ed. Did at you his ask house. Special Did you ask Special Ed about his first album cover? No, not about the cover. Why? Because you know his first album cover, Special Ed, everybody thought his hair was chopped off. <laughs> everybody thought he had one hand. I, I, I would want to ask him that. Ask Special Ed about that. Because well, I think up. he had his hand in his sleeve or something. I'm a hip hop historian, baby. Like, okay, hold on. I gotta look don't this start up. asking me special ed questions. Uh, hold on, special ed cover. Did he have his hand in a sleeve? I'm, hold about, on. I'm, about, I'm, about, to, I'm about to look this up. Youngest in charge. Did he have his hand in a sleeve? Yeah, he just, his hands just tucked into his sleeve in his pocket. See what I'm saying? Niggas thought he had I, I like never, one hand or some that. shit. Oh, look at Nub a little bit. Yeah, like <laughs> when he did that, like that made the cover stand out. See, and I didn't even, I haven't seen that cover since a kid, but how did I know? Nah, okay, I, I can see where you're going with so that. So I'm saying? Well, this is what Special Ed said, mm -hmm. right? And you can't say Special Ed doesn't know what he's talking about because he course, was around he's... before all of us, of you know, course, putting Ed. out albums at like special 16 legend, years man. old, he's right? Come on, let's go. He feels that you can't call Biggie a goat because he didn't have enough projects. He only had two albums I don't and agree not with that many that. songs. I don't, I don't agree with that. There's always going to be a debate who's the greatest rapper. And, you know, a lot of people would choose Tupac based on the message and the the energy and the emotion that, that's put into it. But I, I think that most, you know, serious hip hop heads like me and you, in terms of lyricism and putting words together, most people would give it to Biggie in terms of just the the craftsmanship of of rapping. Being in the studio with him and producing for him, what was it about Biggie that was just different than any other rapper? Um, I don't know. I think that I'm going to be honest. I think that because of his past and, and because of Puffy's love of marketing and legacy, I think they kind of like, um, you know, got it to where that became the status quo. But Biggie was nice. Biggie was another nice rapper. I don't think he had enough, uh, albums to make those claims you know he was a very great artist you know spit his flow it kind of reminded me of myself at, at you know at times but um you know and Pac, Pac was a great artist too and I witnessed him you know once again in my studio as well writing and and doing his thing but I think that um you know just because of both of them passing everyone kind of for one, pit them against each other lyrically, and for two, exalt them up to this phenomenal level of l lyricism. And, you know, they both were great in their own way and in their own right. You know, they both had different styles too. So I would just say that, um, you know, props to both of them for being great lyricists. You know, you can't deny that they were both great. It's just um, how you how you perceive yourself and them as artists, you know what I'm saying? I can't agree with him, because to me, it's not about, it, I couldn't say it's about quantity, it's about quality. That's like saying, Michael Jackson ain't a goat with Thriller, motherfucker. Well, he had a lot of projects, though. It doesn't matter, he but had when a Thriller lot dropped, of big albums. but Thriller but had a bad. he also had Off the Wall, but he also listen, had Bad. He had Off the Wall, but what was the biggest album? Thriller. There you go. So that's like saying, Michael J Jackson just dropped Thriller. He's not a legend. Get the fuck out of here. You could drop one album and be considered a GOAT. 50 drop, get rich or die trying. Niggas talk shit, but niggas are nev could never make music like that. Niggas yeah. think they lyrical. Oh, I'm lyrical. This, da, 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 da. I'm better than this nigga. Da, da, da. Nah, but you it, you could never do what get rich or die trying right. did. Even, even Irv God, get he said it was die. a hell of an album. Listen, get, listen, there's just a Hall of Fame of albums. Yeah. Let's just fucking keep it real. There's a Hall of Fame albums and shit like Get Rich Without Trying, Ready to Die. Life, and, life after death life and after Ready death. to Die is in the Hall of Fame, nigga. Okay, I feel you. Because what, what he feels that was that matter. after, he said that after Biggie died, Puffy marketed him as the greatest of all time and that's where a lot of people I run don't with agree that. with that. Life, listen, what's beef and all that shit? Nobody can make records like that. Ten Crack Commandments. Fuck. Ten Crack Commandments, nobody. Was was iller than big. That's just my opinion. He got taken out at a young age. He dropped two albums. Yeah. Now imagine if he was around as long as Jay is around. He would have dropped two more albums. Would he be considered the goat? 
Oh, you're right. Because if you really think about it, Tupac, Pac, just, Tupac Pac, only had, you could, I feel that Tupac had two great albums. Well, no, three, three great albums. What, All Eyes On Me? All Eyes On Me, Machiavelli, and uh, Me Against the World. I agree with you. What he, What else albums he had? Machiavelli he, he, was, was, he had a lot more albums. He had, and Machiavelli you know, was more of a diss album. That's when he dealt everybody and had an ill concept. Him dying and coming back to it, life. It was a hell of a So he was a, he, my pop was ill because he was like a nigga you could tell read Art of War, nigga that read all kinds of books and shit yeah. like that. Machiavelli, I'm, I'm reading that book. I read that book before. Yeah. So, so you could tell he's a nigga that read books and was smart. Just like I seen Nas on a tour bus reading books. He's mm. smart. Well, Special Ed also on But his, you can't, uh, you on, can't say a motherfucker could be a goat off of one album. Just like I said, if Michael Jackson just dropped Thriller and then retired, and he's not, a, and then retired, he's not a goat. You. Okay, I agree. He's a goat. I agree. I agree. Well, he also said, and we can look up with Thriller, so yeah. like we I don't mean, even yeah, want to look. Like Fifty million or something. Fifty million albums. Yeah. Something so like there's that. no way a nigga could sell one album and he's the goat. It's true. You could do one yeah, album. Right. It's not quantity. It's it's quality over quantity. Oh, nigga. you're right. And, and also, when Biggie died, what happened in Brooklyn with just the parade and like. And the, you got two albums to sit on. You mean to tell me? Life After Death ain't a classic and Ready to Die no, is not a classic. No, they're both classics. Come on, bro. They're both classics. Now, imagine if he would have came out with a third album. Yeah. Or imagine he would have did a joint album with Jay-Z like he was, they said he was supposed to do the commission. Right, the commission what album, happened? Yeah. He would have been off a of Bad Boy and he would have been as big as Jay-Z is right, right now. Well, he also had Junior Mafia album, which and he was, he on, he was Ma on most of the songs. And, and niggas be like, yo, yo, he was writing for Easy. So what? Biggie was writing for Junior Mafia and Lil' Kim. Right. And he's the first nigga to kind of like blow up a bitch. Cause that Foxy Little Kim era, let's you know, let's let's keep it real. Is Kim, Biggie the first uh, the first rapper to blow up a female rapper? Well, I mean, he's well. Let's let's look mm, a little. But you not saying mm, maybe not, maybe not. That's an interesting because point. we could go I, back I, I, and say KRS blew, blew up Miss Melody, nigga. Well, so Miss Melody, Miss Melody never got that big. Though. But she she was fire though. I did listen to a couple of Miss Melody songs. It's back not like her album went platinum. But we though. knew who Miss Melody Kim, Kim went platinum. But we knew who Miss Melody was True. or Lady I mean, there's, Rage there's or Shantae and stuff or like Roxanne that. Roxanne Shantae, right? Yeah. Now check it. What I'm saying to you, what well, little uh, that's, Kim. That's Marley Mall. All right, Marley Mall. Shout out yeah. to Marley Mall. That's Queens. But he wasn't a rapper. He was a producer, which oh, is different. Queens niggas, of course. But you know, Marley Mall used to talk shit on you know Symphony, all that. So look, when you look at little Kim, what was different about little Kim is little Kim was the freak chick. She was the bad little Brooklyn bitch talking nasty. Mm -hmm. So all the shit you see in girls doing now, that really came from Kim. Well, Foxy was doing that too. Nah. Foxy. Foxy what's Little Kim's first album? Oh, you mean the years? You crazy, Let nigga. Little Kim's first album had, not saying Foxy didn't have an impact. Foxy was more of a slick drug dealer talker type of chick that was bad. But then but then she started Little, getting to the sexy thing. She remember? did, but Little Kim was talking some nasty shit, nigga. What are you talking about, bro? It was two different things, bro. All right, so, okay, so... Kim and Foxy actually their what's debut, the, what's Kim their debut first albums album? dropped on the same year. Nigga went yo, listen, same year. All right, they, same year. In well, fact, in fact, now that I'm looking at it, they dropped seven days apart. Who so more? I gotta look it up. You want to look it up? I mean, but what was I mean, Lil, they literally? Kim, was, now I'm starting was, to see the rivalry going what was on Lil here. Kim, what was Little Kim? Um, first album called Hardcore. Hardcore and Foxy's was um. Il Nana. Il Nana. She's talking about her pussy. Both. Il Nana. Let me tell I'm you. I'm just saying she's talking. She. Foxy was definitely selling oh, nah, sex. Oh, no, Foxy was selling was definitely sex, definitely selling sex. She was a little more subtle with it. Kim was a little more raunchy. The name was called Il Nana. I She's know. talking about her pussy on the damn album I name. Know, but Come you on, know what cut I it mean. out. Cut it out, But Tony. I don't want to say what little Kim was saying, but we know. You listen to hardcore? Come on, nigga. She had her titties out. Look, the titties was out. Oh, yeah, that's right. You know what I'm saying? And, and like, I remember Foxy talked about this. If you look at that era... When you look at all the music videos, it was all like light skinned chicks, you know, mixed chicks. Yeah, Foxy, and she was the first Foxy, dark skinned, bad, I, yeah, like, yeah, she yo, definitely, like, she definitely put that was, stamp down and made I, dudes I look at, look at women a little bit differently. Foxy was, she was tall, beautiful. She had the bars, her songs, everything. Her yeah. and Kim, yeah, they both was fine, but we kept it on Biggie. Right. I don't know how you got the Foxy. I just well, said, no, because Jay put Foxy on. 
Yeah, Jay Jay's Fox. first hit song, Ain't No, was Foxy Brown. Ain't No Click I Got. That shit was a fucking no, hit. No, not, not Click I Got. Ain't No. Oh, no, Ain't No. Ain't No, nigga. Ain't No Chick. Yeah, no that one. one. Yeah. Mm, mm, I can't say certain uh, words. Exactly. Nah, that was the clip. That was the joint. Yeah, and da-da-da-da-da-da. the fact that that's what put Jay-Z on. That was his first hit song. I think that believe that was the one in the club. That shit killed it. Right. It was on the Nutty Professor soundtrack. But you can't from when that little Kim come on. Mm. Uh, little Kim in the club too. I yeah. ain't gonna lie. Girls, no, they're, they're both to... dope. But I'm just saying they're both doing the same thing at the same time. Definitely. That's all I'm saying. Two legends. But I'm, I'm just saying. doing what Biggie did because you said Q wrote for Easy. I'm like Big wrote for Kim. Yeah. Very yeah. successful. No, I feel you. And he wrote for Junior Mafia. Now another thing that Special Ed said. We talked about this in our interview, but he originally said it on Drink Champs was that he felt when N.W.A. came, they kind of brought destruction to hip hop. I did have a discussion with Cube, and he understands where I'm coming from, and I understand where he's coming from. They say that they were just making, I wouldn't say parody, but records for the hood, selling out the trunk. It wasn't intended for global scale marketing, but that's what that's where it was taken. Well, well, I mean, listen, the original records is true, but Straight Outta Compton was a major release right. that went number Afterwards. one. Afterwards. Every, everyone knew, everyone knew by the time. Straight Outta Compton was so eagerly anticipated by hip-hop fans that you're not saying, you can't say this is out the trunk anymore. Right. Well, they have to take some accountability, but at the end of the day now, did, once again, we go back to the labels. Now, it's... It's, it comes to a point where the labels are paying artists to emulate this, paying the artists in this genre, paying the artists to send these messages out, to continue, because they did see the effect that it had, just like they saw the effect that empowerment of the conscious music had. The conscious music had an effect. You saw the people walking around with, African pride, black pride, medallions, the gear, uh, self-worth and value. But then when you had the market for those records and the gangster shit, you saw the results of that as well. So yes, music does affect people. It does contribute to people's behavior and the outcome. And it's the same thing we're saying now. It has evolved. I can't say that. Well, you guys you know were kind of on the same you, wave you, you, you know, know in terms of the content. That? Because music is just people expressing themselves. So when, when when I used to be in the hood and I'd be like, my phone rings so much, I walk around with the charger. <laughs> I had an OmniPoint phone and I really had fiends really calling my phone. You understand? So I'm just expressing what I'm going through for the day. Niggas are just trying to make it out. So... If niggas is in the hood and they trying to make it out and they expressing they doing fuck the police because they just got their ass whipped by police, it's just an expression of what's going on in your hood. Who am I to say that the drill guys are bad? I like Sleepy Hollow. I like Chef G. Rest, rest, uh, 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 Chef, Chef G still alive. Free Chef. Not rest <laughs> in peace, but yeah, Free Chef. I've been smoking my bad. Free Chef. K Flock. Yeah. Free K Flock. I like yeah. I like the drill rappers. I like what they do. If Me they too. can support and feed their family, then that's cool. Who am I to say, oh, the drill guys are just fucking up hip hop? No, they're a part of hip hop. Some of them might not respect it. Some of them might not know who Big Daddy Kane, Cool G Rap, um, Slick Rick, um, Dougie Fresh. They might not know what they did for the game. But as long as you got niggas like us still giving niggas their props, I guess it's still good for hip hop. The drill <laughs> niggas, they might not care. They was nowhere near born when, when fucking Biggie and Pop came out. So how would the fuck they would know about Big Daddy Kane or Coogee Rap? Yeah, but huh? at, at the end of the day, you you have to admit that there is a connection between certain types of music and certain types of violence. When you're making songs, talking about, you know, making fun of your dead homies, smoking a so-and-so pack, you, you know what I mean? Making music videos where you're pissing on people's graves and doing dumb shit like that. And then violence gets triggered off it. Who, Rest who, in who, peace, FBG Duck, who you could say got but, killed over his songs. But, but, but let's keep it real. So, but who plays it? The fans. You, you play it. Everybody else gonna play it. If FBG when when FBG Duck did dead niggas, you ain't listen to it. 
Dead Bitches. Oh, Dead, dead Bitches. Did yeah. you listen to it? Yeah, right? I mean, I heard it after the fact. But did you listen to it? At you some point, yeah. It, right? At some point, yeah. Because negativity stats, um, spreads faster than positive. Always. You could give out fucking, he's giving out cars in the hood and fucking sneakers. He's giving back. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Oh, he had a shootout. Word, who got killed? Yeah. Nobody gives a fuck. At the end of the day, we 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 all want to look at the some some people are devoted to what they're devoted to watching serial killers and we're devoted to to shit like when you see shit like on TV, people are devoted to to what serial killer shit. Jeffrey Dahmer, that shit was big. We gonna watch that. We all devoted to the bullshit, man. We I all, know. I'm, I listen, know. We're all guilty. Of. I find myself like this on Instagram all day. I'm just like like I I. I'm seeing what's going on. Like that's like my new TV too. So I have the TV playing, and I'm on my gram. I wanna, I wanna see what's going on. I love, I love the culture. I kind of, I'm gonna keep it real. Like you, you love the bullshit. You don't love the bullshit. We all love the bullshit. I get we it. But, 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 but at a certain point, you have to admit mm -hmm. that certain things are connected to other things. Like for example, there's some laws that were passed. I forgot what state it is. Like for oh. example, that if you're a drunk driver and you kill someone's parents, you're responsible for child support. Yeah, that's um, blood money. That's in Dubai. That's in Dubai. If you kill somebody, you're responsible right, for- Right, but uh, in the States, this is now happening. Oh, you know that, what I'm saying? that makes it, sense. In the I, States, I know, you, you kill someone's mom, you gotta pay child support for the kids if yeah, you're a drunk I know, driver. I know they did that in Dubai, so it makes sense, because like, yeah. I mean, but you shouldn't be drunk driving anyway. You get a, exactly, so get what, what I'm saying driver. is, is <laughs> that like, uh -huh. At a certain point, what I think is going to happen, and me, listen, I had Leo Cohen on my show, right? The most powerful person in music, essentially, you know, yeah. in the world. And, you know, and I asked him, I said, at a certain point, you know, with the way lawsuits are going, I think that people are going to start suing record labels over putting out artists that put out certain messages that ends up triggering certain events, you know what I mean? I don't think it'll never work. I think it'll happen you can't, eventually. You can't, listen, you can't, just because I listen to NWA or this person or that person, that don't mean that I should go out and do anything stupid because you can't blame it on the music. You can't, listen, hold on, let me just talk. Yeah. Let me, give, me, give me my time to shine. Give me the floor. So you can't just put it on the music or, yo, Grand Theft Auto, yo, that's causing my kids to wild out. You can't do that because... As you, if you got a fucking brain, unless you don't got a brain, because I could listen to some gangster shit. That's not going to make me go some drill music. Uh, just shut up, buddy. Just a week ago, Bobby Smurda, I'm just dancing to it in the club. That's not altering my brain okay. to go want to kill a nigga. Do you remember, remember? I just told you that sometimes music alters you in a smooth way. Like if I'm in Amsterdam yeah. and I'm in a coffee shop and I'm smoking weed, of course I want to listen to Sade or... Mary J. Blige or or some Bobby Womack or something that's laid back because right. I'm a music movie guy. Yeah. So, of course, it's just moods of music, but I never listen to a song. Of course, a 50 Cent song got niggas hype, niggas be like, yo, your music did something for me, it motivated me, or it made me stand up to a bully. Sometimes, yeah, if it's it, music does that sometimes, but... If a nigga go shoot up a school or a church, come on, man, that's that's no, I that's not it. what music I, I do but remember, or movies for example, do. Of course, if you see Scarface yeah. or or you hear something like Cash Rules, if I'm selling drugs already, right? I'm selling drugs already, and Cash Rules, Cash Rules everything around me. Cream, get the even money. though I love Wu Tang, some of y'all hate me, but I love you guys. But Wu Tang, legends in the game. Wait, wait, that Wu Tang doesn't like you. No, I don't, that's a whole other story. We go okay, back to we'll that. I love along. them guys. Listen, okay. so <laughs> when Wu Tang don't like me either, look, look, so it is what you, it is. So when you look at Wu Tang, right? Cash rules. Niggas used to come outside and sell drugs to that song. Right. It was cold. That was the cold. Throw on your North Face. Get money. I got a thousand. And this is real shit. This is how I used to move. I got a G pack on me because I'm not. I'm really telling you. I got a G pack in the North Face. C cash rules. Cash rules. Everything around me. I wanted to get an MPV because they had the MPV. They outside. They hustling in the cold because that's what it was. It wasn't no scamming where you get a check for a million dollars and just chill in the crib on the computer. Nah, niggas was outside in the rain, sleet or snow on the grind. 
And not saying what niggas is doing now, they they got computers. You got futuristic hustling now. You right. ain't even got right. to fucking get up now. Now, but look, that motivated me. But I was selling drugs before that song came out. You understand what I'm saying? When Scarface came out, you seen Rich Porter movies and all that shit. Yeah, they saying cool that stuff. that motivated them. They were selling drugs already. It just motivates you to get more money. Yeah, music could motivate you to do something. Don't get me wrong, but to go out and kill somebody, that's when you 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 you're turning a fantasy world into a uh, another world. Right. But <laughs> but for example, you just bugging, just like just like Vlad. And I always say you're wrong because you say, "Yo, video games." Is is for where? It's, it's crazy, a waste of time. Da 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 da. Right. Video games. You sound crazy to me because video games keep niggas off the streets. If I'm playing 2K all day, then I'm not going somewhere stupid where I get in trouble. Well, I never said that. I just said it's a waste of time. But it's not a waste of time because you know how many niggas uh, are staying. You know right. how many killers are staying. My man's from Chicago, right? You know how many killers are staying in the house in yeah. Chicago when it's cold and they got their 2K and they don't want to go shoot they out right now because right. they, they playing they man for $100. It's keeping niggas off the fucking right. street. But, but that time two, can be better look, spent reading books or going to school. I'm just saying. No, I'm not saying. Or learning a skill. Look, I read books too. Saying. Like I said, I, I, I You can't read, read a book while playing a video Lord's game. Pal, you can't read a book while reading Art a video game. I, I read books too. But in the meantime, if... You want to play your son, it's a bonding thing. Okay. You want to play your son in 2K, this, that, your son. I, I never said that playing casual video games is a bad thing. I play video games. You I'm just it's a saying, waste of time. I'm just saying when you're spending, when you're an adult and you're spending four or five hours a day Oh, no, if you're an adult it, and you ain't got no job. That's and all what I'm that, saying. Yeah, like, they, you know, if, if all but, your- But everybody's not like that. Some yeah. niggas are playing video games. Most niggas are playing video games. They in the trap. They killing time. They waiting for their phone ring. They doing right. whatever. Some niggas are playing video games. Cause they got their man cave. People are playing video. Niggas are getting paid to play video games. Some niggas well, bet no, and make a lot of money. I said if you're money. getting paid to play games, that's yeah. a whole different conversation. Cool. Yeah, but if you're wasting time, yeah. if you're wasting time, but you're it's wasting not time. a total waste of time. All right, that's what well, I'm saying. But in terms of the music thing, like for example, when Jeezy and Gucci were going at it, mm. or going at it, like I remember, I think uh, Jeezy made a song that was like, "Yeah, I got twenty five thousand for for Gucci Man's chain," and then that turned Gucci into a fucking target, and then. Not long afterwards, there was a home invasion, and then someone ended up dying, and, and everything else like that. Right, so you see, when, you when, see the bullshit bleed into real life situations. Oh, of course, no, I'm not. I'm not saying that can't happen, but I'm not. I, I can't just blame music. That happens because of people, of people just not liking each other. Sometimes, shit happens. Like I said, when a lot of us came out, we had egos. Gucci man was a crazy nigga, nigga. Niggas catching Gucci cases. Was definitely crazy. You know what I'm saying? Fifty's crazy. Jay Z. All these niggas was niggas was really in the streets, bro. You taking street niggas and you trying to change them. It takes time. Yeah. It takes time for you to mature. Right. Like I look at a lot of shit that we've been through and just happy that niggas are still alive. Nobody got hit. Nobody's dead. You know, well, a couple of niggas got hit, but you know what I'm saying? Like, There's G-Unit people that aren't around. Yeah. Rest, rest in peace, Maserati Fox. Yeah, Lodi Mac. Lodi this, Mac. The list go, this a list that goes on. But there's a list, there's a, there's any, unfortunately, any day you too big of a list. Any day you could have caught a bullet, you know what I'm saying? Because with fame, a lot of comes with it. Mm -hmm. You're famous now, so you got to watch how you move. Old friends might not think that you amped up because you, you're moving different. Because you come to the hood too much, niggas are going to say you broke. If you don't come to the hood, niggas going to say you bougie. Either way, you don't you don't win. Sometimes you might come to the hood, certain niggas don't want to speak, so now you're feeling awkward. You don't give a fuck, because I let my nuts hang everywhere I go. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, like, why I feel awkward when I can go somewhere and be loved? I can go hang with my lawyer. He's inviting me to the fucking Knicks game. Right. But meanwhile, I might go to the hood, check niggas, and one nigga might be acting awkward because he don't know how to feel around me. Right. You know what I mean? Or oh, ain't seen me in a minute. Go, so hang, go hang out go with to, Vlad at the country I, club. <laughs> yeah, go hang with Vlad at Calabasas Country Club. Shit yep. like that. Right. You don't even know I'm in L.A. Because that's how I move. I move militant. Right. But like like I said, everybody ain't going to love you. Like like I said, I go to the hood. There's, there's people that I gave money to and might see them a year or two later and they act like I ain't give them some money, a couple of hundred for Christmas or whatever. They might not want to say hi. Cool. And I know these people. Or see them at a funeral and they won't say hi to you want to act awkward, like, listen, I don't want you to kiss my ass. I'm still, I just feel like I'm blessed. I don't feel like I'm better than nobody. You know what I'm saying? As much as I love caviar pancakes, when I come back here, I wanted a beef patty with cocoa bread. 
Straight from the Jamaican store on Southside. I'm right in the hood. I'm just moving militant. You might, you ain't gonna know where I'm at. I don't, I know how to move. Cause I didn't have cars, Bentleys, all that shit get shot up. Car chases on the highway cause people identify you from the car. I might be in a hoopty. I might be in something low key. I might Yeah, be... when I met you in Calabasas, you were in a hoopty. Yeah, I'm in a fucking hoopty. Right, I you remember. You wouldn't even know. I remember that. That shit had Vegas plates, tents. <laughs> you wouldn't even know cause I like moving like yeah. that. Cause I know how it is. You. LA is to the point now, you know how it is. You go yeah. shopping on Rodeo, the fucking girl yeah. right there might be Grape Street. You go yeah. to town. You get shot for your Richard Mill watch <laughs> yeah. right there on Rodeo. You go to That's town. happened. The way there's Mexican mafia. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You yeah. you just never know. You never you, know. You never know who knows who his cousin is this, or you you never know. Well, your man, Uncle Murder, had just dropped the 2023 wrap up. Whoa, 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 whoa. Huh? My name, when he listed out the names of people that are mentioned yeah, you in were it. you acting like you was worried or scared. You kept well, calling no, I wasn't me. Scared. I didn't want to mention well, to well, No, him. no, I wasn't scared. I was excited. I'm like, okay, oh, this is the first time I'm going to be mentioned in a wrap-up. Yeah, definitely. Right? Well, I didn't do murder. anything wrong. So yeah, I, I'm three not, parts you know, wrap-up. Yeah. I, I, no, I, was, I was excited because I, I called you and I'm like, did you hear it? Because I, yeah, I want to know definitely. what it's about. Because he dropped the first part and my name wasn't in it. Then he dropped the second part and then I thought it was going to be over the Keefe D shit, but it was actually over the Diddy shit. Oh, okay. Because he played a clip from my Aaron Hall interview where oh, he was yeah. talking about how... Oh, yeah, that was kind of crazy. Uh, well, Aaron said that, that Diddy has seen him make love to a woman. Yeah, it was kind of... It was it was a strange interview. <laughs> it was a strange shout interview. Shout out to Aaron Hall. I am an Aaron Hall fan. He yeah, of hits. course. Shout out to a guy. Yeah, that I, li- I like... Because Aaron Hall was God. That was... that was It was yeah, God. Teddy Riley. Teddy Riley. Yeah. I like that album. I, I, I remember that album. Right. I like and all that. Exactly. And then you know I loved him in New Jack City. Right. You, I just watched that over again. Aaron Hall is definitely That's that dude. a dope artist. But all the weird shit watching me, I, I'm not with Yeah, I'm That's, not with that either. Like now, this. Diddy got the worst of it mm. in that. Because essentially that whole part two was all about Diddy. Right. What do you think about that Diddy shit? Because you were on tour when it all happened. I mean, I, the way I see it is sometimes, you know, what, what's in the dark, sometimes the truth comes to light. I don't know if it's true or not. I don't want to say it's not, but... You know how this is. Your back, once you fuck up, you know how it is. You'll lose them 18 deals. You lose the deals. Everybody will turn their back on you. So that's why I don't, like me, I'm just, I love the position I'm in. Because I'm just, I'm just for me. Because it's like once people see you losing, everybody just, it's over. Yeah, it's a some people might say something. Some people might not. You know, but you, you can't, you can't let your, your power supersede who you are, bro. I'm saying. Well, your man 50 Cent has been relentless against yeah, Puffy. That's what 50 do. Relentless. That's it was 50. like every day, did he do it? Yeah, yo, <laughs> did listen, he not do that's it? What, that's what, that's what. I, I mean, it was, bro, it's like bro, footage after footage listen, after post what, after that's post. That's what 50 do. 50's, listen, listen. 50 is 50. He gonna, he's he's going to say what he want to say. He's going to do what he want to do. He don't give a fuck. He took a walk on the wild side already. Been shot nine times. Just like he was in the hood. This, this to me, it's nothing new. This is the 50 I know from being on the boulevard. Oh shit, Boo Boo coming. He's coming to start some shit. He'll have this nigga fight and this nigga. He'll tell this nigga he's pussy. I mean, that's just where we come from. That's just who he is, aggressive nature. What exactly, did something happen between 50 and Diddy I, at some I, point? I don't know. You don't know. I don't know. Okay. I don't care. I know, I just know what he's saying. Other niggas are probably saying behind the scenes. They just don't want to say it. Is you there know? really a documentary coming? I don't even know. Okay, fair enough. You know, man. But fair. I know, I know, like a nigga like Rod um, Bonds, his security. Roger Bonds. Who I was we, on, who we've I, interviewed. Yeah, Roger Bonds, like Bonds. That nigga, he a stand up nigga. I can yeah. say that. Like that nigga stand on business. I was on an island with him. Oh, really? Yeah, and like okay. he ain't, he ain't no. I don't see him like not speaking his truth. Like if the nigga gonna say something like. I know the nigga for being a stand-up nigga. Yeah, no, I had a whole conversation with him. We were actually going to do the interview with him. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dan's a project, ended up doing it instead because me and Roger had a conversation about doing the interview because he wanted to do it with us first. Right. But it was like, because of how big we are, it potentially could have put us in a lawsuit. 
situation with Puffy. Oh, okay. You see what I'm saying? Not to say what he was saying wasn't true, because I'm sure it is. Yeah, I'm and I remember, I remember uh, the dude from Danza called me up. He was like, hey, man, we're going to do a yeah, interview. Yeah, because everything you know, is allegedly, right? Everything so, is an alleged. So yeah, I'm like, so, okay, <laughs> listen, you know, because he's like, yo, man, we're going to do this interview. But Bonds, I could just say, I, I'm allegedly. No, Bonds, Bonds I, is solid. I could just say he's a stand-up dude. You he know, is. I fuck with him, but, you know. He is. He is. And, he, you know, cool. he told me a lot of the stuff that ended up coming out in the interview. Right. You know, that basically, you know, Puffy was abusive, but so was Cassie. There were situations where she would punch Puffy in the face okay. out of the blue, and allegedly, then he would react. Allegedly, and, yeah, yeah, allegedly, and the, that type of stuff. But you know how 50 is, man? 50 don't, he don't really give a fuck about nobody, just certain niggas. He don't really fuck with nobody. He in his own space. And that's just yeah. how Gina always been. We always been the, the bad guys of the situation. You know, so it's like the industry always kind of like hated niggas, and it's cool. Like, I know niggas hated me, and... It's cool. It's like because everybody ain't gotta like you. Everybody don't gotta be a fan. I think I think more everybody people love you these days, though. I mean, if they do, I appreciate it. Yeah. You know, I don't pay attention to the haters. I just like the love and support yeah. that I get. Like, I still, I still be open that I go like to Europe or Africa or or or, or anywhere in the U.S., St. Louis, Chicago, and niggas know Yale and show me love. And you know, I'm still appreciative of that because I never thought that we would make it this far. Right. You know? Now, but the thing I is... I change. A lot of motherfuckers change. No, no, you've been I the ain't. same since I met you. Yep. 20 years ago, go. essentially. Still the same nigga. Now, uh -huh. the interesting thing about this Puffy lawsuit with Cassie mm -hmm. was in all my years of reporting the news, and it's been 15 years now, right. I've never seen anyone settle a lawsuit that quickly. She filed that lawsuit, and then like 24 hours later, I remember I mean, Puffy what, even what, put up what a picture. What did Murder saying to wrap up? If he didn't do it, then why'd he pay? Yeah, no, I, mean, I remember yeah. uh, 50 even put up a picture and it was like Puffy and Cassie. He said, if I send you this, I want the money today, not on Monday. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yo, that shit was a quick, a quick lawsuit, but we don't, we don't know what happened, but shit, it was, it was answered quick. Yeah. Cassie got her M's up and that's when everybody else come out the woodwork. Oh yeah, there's like four other lawsuits. Yeah. Now, these women ain't, look, listen, bro, they, like, when it comes to women's rights, it's been stronger than ever. Yeah. Like, women have a lot of rights, and it's been a long time that women haven't had rights. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, 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 if you do something bad, yeah, there's a chance. They're making up for lost time. You know, you, that's why I always <laughs> think to myself I had a daughter, because I had a little more respect. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm not really a disrespectful guy when it comes to women. That's really never been my thing. You know what I'm saying? But. You fuck around. Some of your songs, though. Of course. I don't of course the song. love hoes. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> That's music. It's I fun. ain't love no. But look, but what I'm saying to you is like, when when people know they get, when there's money involved, you already know. Yeah. I mean, listen, it's a pylon. You know, not it's saying I'm with Cassie. I'm just saying with the other lawsuits right. that's going to come after Cassie. Yeah. But there was some crazy shit in the Cassie lawsuit. For example, mm -hmm. when Kid Cudi started dating Cassie, and his car, car blew, blew up. up. Yeah, that's crazy. Have you ever heard of stuff like that happening? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I don't, I'm not obliged You've to speak heard, on shit. I'm not asking for specifics, but yeah. you've heard of people's cars blowing up. I know if a nigga blow my car up, I'm, 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 I'm shooting your shit up. That's it. <laughs> I'll shout to Kid Cudi, but if a nigga blow my car up in my driveway, I'm getting at you. You've heard of someone's car getting blown up in their driveway? Without, I've, without getting specifics? I've seen, yeah, I've seen that happen in the hood. Yeah. Really? In the yeah, hood? Yeah. You've seen this happen? Yeah. How do you even blow up a car? How do you get a bomb I mean, to blow up a car? Motherfuckers that... was trying to set the bulletproofs on fire. The bulletproof trucks. Well, that's a little different than blowing up a car, isn't it? I mean, it was hard that you they uh, one bulletproof got set on fire. <laughs> this is crazy. And then and then a motherfucker tried to uh they shot my bulletproof up and tried to set it on fire. It when, was a whole bunch of shit. When was this? It was years ago. My man had it. They shot his crib up. Set his garbage on fire to try to get him to come out the house. Okay. Shot up towards the window up there, but they shot the bulletproof too. I remember there was a lady from High 97. There was a bullet actually in my bulletproof, like stuck in the glass. I remember uh, Prodigy had the bulletproof uh, yeah. Suburban or something. Yeah. We, well, you know, he got that from us. We all had them. I had one. 50 had one, Banks, and me. Yeah, I think Buster had one also. And then Prodigy got the 10 one because it was good for shows. You pull up to a show. Shoot out, you go to Connecticut, pistol wave in New Haven, you go to Baltimore. Pistol wave in New Haven. You go to the <laughs> Bronx, you go to any rough place, you got the BP if it go down. Yeah. You're right there, level four. Well, and I think the craziest, if I think, I mean, what's out of the car blowing up, which is pretty insane. That's probably the craziest shit. But yeah. the second craziest shit was. I would have got at P. Diddy for that one. <laughs> Fuck that. Cassie said that 
Puffy would make her find male prostitutes. Yeah, all that's, that's, to that's watch, just, that's just, watch her have sex with these crazy. dudes while he would pleasure himself. That's that's crazy, but you know, I guess everybody has their pet peeves. That's some freaky <laughs> shit to me. <laughs> you know. Well, listen, it is what it is, it's man. Different. Like it even when you look is. at Adam, Adam, I like Adam Twenty Two. But yeah, that's my man. He likes, but he, he yeah. does some freaky shit. Yeah, but he's a porn star, so it's kind yeah. of different. It, it is different. Yeah, he's a he, porn star. So right, first he had the dude have sex with his wife, and then he had a, right. a contest where a dude don't have a threesome. Don't be watching all that shit like that. That Adam, no jump out. Like I like him. I like. Yeah, him. that's my. I'm man. not saying what he's what what he's doing is. That's him it's all consensual. It's his business. It's all consensual. But what I'm saying is yeah. he's a porn star. There's not going to be a lawsuit over this shit. Now, if you're a porn star and you want your girl to do do some freaky shit, that's on you. Like, yeah. me, I wouldn't want... That's yeah, not kinda, my thing. I don't want a guy in the room with me when I'm nah, with my chick my or my lady or whatever you want to call it, right? So, but for me, like, when you look at Adam, his wife, Adam's a porn star. Yeah. So it's kind of different. Are. Yeah. But it's different. It's cool. They're porn stars. They, you know... Yeah, They're freaky. Shout out to Adam. I like. I gotta get on no jumper. Okay, I gotta I'll, get I'll up on there where him and Whack would be kind of crazy. Okay, I'll set you up. Whack is crazy though, huh? Um, well, G Dep, I guess, just got granted clemency. Yeah, shout out to G Dep. So he's getting out. I because G Dep got high and turned himself in or something like. That. Yeah. So he, here's what happened. What happened was before he had a record deal, he went and robbed some dude, and the guy and resisted, he pop, and, and he, he shot him. him. Right. He didn't think he killed him. He just shot him. Right. Right? Uh-huh. Years after the whole bad boy thing had run its course. Yeah, and, and, you they know, said he, he got was, dusted and he went. Yeah, he, he looked like he was high. I mean, yeah. When I saw him, he looked bad, man. I remember when I saw him when I first moved to New York in 2002, he looked bad. He Dang. was in the project somewhere and, and, you know, we met up with him real quick. And his, his life was just going really badly and he was always thinking, well, it's because of the shooting I did back then. This is God punishing me. It's my karma. Right. I should go to the police and just you know, get this off my chest. His wife begged him not to do it, begged him not to do it. And one day he went into the precinct and he said, hey, I did a shooting on this date back in the 90s on this corner, whatever, whatever. I just want to admit to it. When they looked it up, they realized the guy guy died. So now he's in prison for murder. Yeah, he just got out, right? He, well, he's getting out. He got clemency. He did, I mean, like, I, I think, mean, like I mean, 10 years or I something. I guess that, uh, maybe that was just his calling, man. Maybe, for me, it's crazy, you know, but a lot of people, I think, will blame it, say he was drugged, he was dusted, and it, the, he got haunted or some shit, but it's crazy to turn yourself in something, you you know. Yeah, he could have been out. I mean, there's other ways that you could get your life together than going to prison. Yeah, I know, but maybe that shit haunted him for real. Well, uh... I mean, shout out to G. Dap, man. I hope he comes out and gets his life together. I, I, I interviewed Depp. him in prison about that. Yeah, G. Dap is, he definitely. He know, was he, nice. He had some hits. He he had, yeah, well, he had like one hit. Yeah, take this money. Take take this, this ain't money. nobody going to take this from me. Yeah, that shit was shake. dope. Yeah, the Harlem Shake shit. Yeah. Take this money. <laughs> hey, that was the shit. Like Rob had woe at that time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, Bad Boy was on fire Rob, at that Black time. Rob pa- He's still alive, right? No, Black, Black Rob died. Oh, yeah, he passed away. He passed she away a few years ago. Black, Black Rob. Yeah. Black Rob had woe, definitely. Mm-hmm. Well, another person who Uncle Murder talked about was Andre 3000 mm-hmm. and that flute album. Yeah. And I remember I did a tweet. I remember when, when it first dropped, it didn't have a lot of views. I basically said, like, this, this album is, is ridiculous. He right. should have dropped it. No one's listening to the shit. And then, you know, got like maybe a couple million views afterwards. So everyone's like getting on me like, man, it ain't about views or streams. It's about art and you don't get it. You know, this is him being artistic. It's so brilliant. But my thing is like. It is brilliant when you think about it because it was promoted. Everybody wants to hear him rap, which he said. Something like he's... He's too he, old to rap. Nah, I don't believe he that. He said that. I think Andre 3000 is like one of the best. I think when it comes to Atlanta rap, he's like one of the artists to really cross over. Not saying like there's not a million artists that crossed over, but what I'm saying, he was just was different. No, Hey Ya was a mega Even hit. the way he dressed, like he just yeah. was like a fucking, like one of the first rock stars. Yeah, shout out to Erykah Badu. Yeah, Erykah Badu turned that. him into a rock star, I guess. Exactly. You know, shout out to Eric Badu and Love Hard. Um, but she turned him into a rock star, man. Hey y'all, uh, he had mad hits. Oh, Outcast is a is a is sorry, a Miss Jackson. Group. Yeah, they like, have a bunch. They just they just made some mainstream main mega hits. Exactly. So, but people would love to hear because didn't he have a he just had a verse on Killer Mike album, didn't? He? Yeah, he did. And he killed that shit. Yeah. 
But he so, was basically so, saying he's too old to rap. But, but you know, what am I gonna rap about? My vision not being but, as good. But, I, I gotta go get my colon checked. Like, but but what I'm saying is he he could feel like that. But when I heard him on Killer Mike, he was nice. Killer Mike album, and I think Future's on the record. Yeah, shout right. out to Killer Mike. He exactly. had one of the dopest albums of the album. year. Shout out to Killer Mike. Um, Killer Mike album. I heard his verse. It's fucking dope. I kept rewinding his verse. Yeah, him, Future, and Killer Mike. I mean, my whole point is. Is so like, he could feel like that, but yeah. when I listened to the Killer Mike album, I was excited to hear him spit on there. Right. So, so what was you your know? favorite song on the flute album? I didn't listen to the flute album. <laughs> right. And that was the whole thing that people want to call it. See, like, I, I'm fine with being the bad guy a lot of times because I'll say the shit that no one else wants to say. And my shit is that flute album was trash. Okay, coming from one of the great rappers of all time. But nobody wants to hear Andre 3000 play a flute. That's what I'm they, saying. They, but it's art. So That's like what you I'm said, saying. people are going to be like, respect it, and everybody's going to have an opinion. Everybody has an opinion. But we want to hear him spit. Exactly. Like I just said, he's saying, oh, I'm too old to rap. I just heard your verse on Killer Mike's album. Right. Shout to Killer Mike again with Future. Mm -hmm. And that was one of my favorite songs. Right. I actually got the album. Right. I listened to the album. It's a good yeah. album. But what, what, a great album, out. actually. But what I'm saying is, is like, look, if you want to play the flute, that's cool. But to put it out and everything else like that, um, you know, like, just because it's artistic doesn't mean that it's a great project. It's perfect marketing because we're talking about it now. Right. If, so if he rapped, we would have talked about it. He played the flute. He didn't rap. And he still sold a good amount of records because he played the flute. And maybe now that we're talking about it, I might go listen to it. Okay. Because I did see somebody online playing it, but I'm not a flute guy. Like, I never <laughs> Nobody's listen. a flute guy. I might guy. listen to, to orchestra music, some Beethoven or right. something, before I just loosen well, to a flute. shout out to Kenny G. Kenny G went platinum with the yeah, flute. Kenny but, G, you know? Yeah, Kenny G, yeah. Kenny G, you, so you, you can't, you got to respect it. If he goes platinum off playing the flute, you would be fucking impressed. I he guess, goes man. Gold. Me, me, and the DOC had a conversation about this, and he was like, "Hey, man, you know, just be, you know, art, art is art." And I'm like, "Doc, like you're, you're hip hop, right? You roll for Easy E, like you roll for Dr. Dre. You, right. you made Snoop. Like he basically developed Snoop into the artist that he was." Right. I'm like, "Are you bumping this flute album?" He's like, "No, nah, I'm not." And I'm like, yeah. "Okay." And that's I've been my, in that's my DOC. Point. I've been in the studio with him. That was yeah. a great moment in hip hop. Yeah, that's my point. That right. hip hop fans are not bumping this, and that's my point. That's just my only point. Okay, yeah, you dropped yeah, the flute yeah. album, everyone was disappointed. Yeah, yeah. nobody's going to really check for a flute album. We want to hear you spit yeah. Andre 3000. So if you're watching this, we love you. I loved your verse on Killer Mike album with Future. It's mm -hmm. one of my favorite songs. Shout to you, Future, and Killer Mike. Drop an album. We want to hear you rap. Exactly. That's it. That's it. That's you're it. not too old. Trust me. Everybody loves you, and you're one of the greatest. And your last verse was remarkable. You just dropped, bro. Uh, BG's out of prison. Shout to BG. Yeah, man. I forgot how dope he was, man. Nah, you forgot BG that BG cool. flow let's, from the, the early let's, Cash let's, Money days. Let's let's you know what's crazy. I remember Fifty and me opening up for uh, Cash Money, right. Rough Riders tour, right, right, right. And Little Wayne and and Birdman, and BG and them niggas, them niggas, man, and Turk, them niggas and Juvenile, them niggas all been rich and famous for a long time, man. Like I remember going on that tour and be like, damn, this is. They had all kinds of fucking props up there. And they, like Birdman and them niggas been doing this shit for a long fucking time, man. But BG, I think he's getting everything he deserves right now, you know? Well, he just dropped a new song today with Finesse Two Times. Yeah, and he got it at Wayne. I he called Lil Wayne a bitch. Yeah, it's all over the internet. I've seen it. Yeah, I guess so much for that Cash Money uh, or the Hot Boys reunion tour. I guess that's not happening now. I mean... It's it's levels to the shit. When you when you look at Wayne, Wayne is such a big of an artist. He's like an icon. And, right. He doesn't need you know, a high, he doesn't need a hot boys tour. It's kind of like more on the ball of his court. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not not and and it doesn't take nothing away from what Juvenile and, and what 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 Turk did and and, and BG because they all came up together. But Wayne, look man, he's off. He's on a whole other planet, man. Of course. Then he had Drake, the success of Drake. And, and, and Nikki, you know what I'm saying? And then it was a point where Drake, Wayne and was Tiger, considered. Yeah. Tiger, and you know, everybody else, the whole Cash Money Records, the Young y Money young Records. Money, yeah. I mean, he had a lot of success. You see how, I mean, that counts. That counts, bro. Now, 
and as well as his success. So the ball is always in his court, man. Come on, bro. Right. But then there was the snitching allegations that happened too. You heard about that? Yeah, but I don't like to call anybody. I don't like to put the snitching thing into paperwork is out there. And, and, and if there is not my business, you know, I'd kind of stay out of that shit. Okay. Fair enough. I see niggas put it out. It's all entertainment, though. I'm not saying that uh, I don't like watching 1090 Jake or. Right. Because the regular on my show now. It. Yeah. Yeah. Shout, I'm, I seen him in a hotel in Dumbo. We ran into each other. Oh, and really? Was kicking it. Yeah. Okay. Shout out to 1090 Jake. That might have been around the time of our. Well, no, no, it wasn't. It was Dumbo. We we had a show in um, Barclays at that time. Huh. And, yeah, I'm trying to think if it was around the time of our interview. And, yeah, because because we flew him I in. I ran for into him. He definitely, he definitely was outside. Yeah, in New York. He's also big. People think he's just a little fat guy, but he's nah. actually like six three. Like yeah, he's yeah. a big he dude. Was, he definitely yeah. was with the Goombas. He definitely <laughs> we, we we was in some nice swanky hotel and he happened to just jump in the elevator and was like, to ninety J. Yep. I fuck with him though. He's a stand up dude. He he outside. Yeah. He definitely outside. He's outside. He exactly. Ain't, he ain't hiding or nothing. I I ran into him in New York. So. Right. I mean, and look, Gunna, uh, the fuck you mean song was the most streamed rap song of 2023? It was a hit, yeah. Do you feel that in 2024, snitching really affects the rapper's career anymore? I feel like, you know, street credibility holds a lot of weight to certain people, and I think certain people just don't care. I think the music supersedes everything now. So it doesn't matter. You could be a police officer and you drop a hit, that shit. You know what I'm saying? I think <laughs> it might take off. You know what I'm saying? Nobody cares. Like an active police officer yeah, you could on be the force. A police officer on the force, nigga. You That's going to happen at some point. You a cop. Like an actual. You a, you a actual cop and you drop a hit record. I don't think nobody would fucking care. As long as it's a hit record. Well, yeah. I mean, listen, for years, and you could go back to the Vlad TV calc. I said for years, there is going to be a mainstream out of the closet, gay rapper with yeah. hit songs. Definitely. And look, Lil Nas X. Yeah, definitely, hundred percent. He's all he's that closet in his rear view. He's wearing dresses and long yeah. weaves and you know thongs yeah. and whatever the fuck else. And people love him. And he's got huge records. Yeah, and and that's, you know, Old Town and, Road was just the beginning and, of a string of and hits. And it just come to a point where people be like, that that's your preference. That's. It's your thing. It's, his Old Town Road was a hit record. Nobody cared if, if he was gay or not. Well, he wasn't even gay. At, he wasn't out the closet gay. Like, you know what I mean? Later on, you oh, find he came out. out. Well, that's his business. Yeah, but, Nobody, but he had more hits after that. Yeah, he definitely had more hits. Nobody cares. It's all about hit music. Because when we talk about Gunner, it's an allegation, right? We just seen him on tape, which looked kind of crazy. Well, it's not an allegation. He admitted, you, you see him saying, on tape saying YSL is a gang. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, Sometimes you you could talk to your lawyer and your lawyer might tell me, my lawyer might tell me yo I got a cop out for you yeah right because because he didn't play a major part in major shit and I'm not making no excuses I don't know the paperwork I ain't seen it I don't judge anything till you see it in black and white mm -hmm. but his lawyer could have definitely told him yo take this cop out don't worry da 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 your lawyer is not going to tell you he's just telling you copping out to maybe discharge this charge but your lawyer is not going to tell you exactly what you might be copping out to. He might just say, I got a deal for you, cop out. You ain't telling on nobody because this is what his lawyer said. Yes. You ain't implicate nobody. Yeah. You're not going to tell on thug on the stand. We're not taking a stand, blah, blah, blah. Word, I'm not telling on thug. Let me get that deal. Right, I talked to his lawyer about right? that. Right? Yeah. Right? That's what his lawyer said. Yeah, exactly. Shout out to his lawyer, right? The only thing is, you don't really hear seeing young thug saying nothing. So if young thug say, yo, nah, that nigga ain't implicating me. He ain't telling me on the stand. Right? Like I said to you from the beginning when we talked about Gunner, I said, damn, if that was my situation, I probably wanted to talk to 50 before I get out. Yeah. Remember I told you, you could rewind the tape and mm -hmm. I said that. Yeah. And that's kind of more the situation. When you hear a song, he said, I sent a kite, I never got it back. So you don't know oh, what- Oh, he, he said that in the song? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. You sent a Gunner album, a Gunner album, fire. Because no matter what, if you make good music, Niggas are going to fuck with yeah, you. I'm not, I'm not saying I would snitch or tell on a nigga, but that don't mean that niggas ain't going to listen to a nigga music. 
Yeah, and look, I mean, that whole YSL case is a is a train wreck. I mean, since last time the case, you know, the actual trial actually started. This shit is longer than OJ trial. I feel like. Oh yeah, it's gonna be it like a year. Like, to yeah, me, it's gonna it's be like a, a year long trial. To me, it feel like it's a bullshit case. You might as well just give them time served or whatever, because they bids are different. Them niggas be getting twenty years, but they get ten years probation and ten years of they bid. So they bids is different. When you hear niggas in New York, you hear 20 years, nigga just get 20 years. You ain't hearing no 10 years probation unless you getting like a 10 of life or whatever they call it. You know what I'm saying? I did skip it, so I wouldn't know. But with, with him, it's like they get different kind of bids. They might say, give them 15 years probation. They probation numbers is correct. Well, right, and his brother, uh, you know what I mean? Young like, Thug's brother got like a 10 year Probation, probation, but then he got caught with a gun. And he got sent in for ten of years. Of course, because they shit is different. They'll get, they'll say twenty years, but you really doing a dime because you doing ten years and ten years on probation. New York ain't like that. Niggas say twenty, you doing twenty, fifteen. Yeah, you doing ten. Niggas wish they could have got ten years probation, but there's some niggas that might not even want to take that because in New York, niggas don't want to have five years probation. Right. So imagine like that's a normal number. For probation. Right. You know I mean, what I'm saying? I mean, I talked to Boosie. 10 years probation? Yeah. Hell crazy. no. No, no. I mean, me and Boosie talked about this I would last never want to do that shit. He thinks the whole thing is is a chess move. Because it's like, look, we're going to give this dude 10 years probation. We're going to not allow him to leave the state. So we're going to stick him here with all the people that he has problems with. He's probably going to carry a gun. We're going to catch him with a gun and give him the 10 years. So we of got course. him a snitch and we got the 10 years. High five. But see, for us in New York, this this you know how like like there was bids like they'd be like, yo, you could do like when, when, when they was light on the gun shit, they could say, yo, you could do a year in jail for a gun on an island or do five years probation. There's niggas that want to take that year because they're going to get out in six months, maybe eight months, then five years probation. So in New York, five years probation is normal. When you start talking them out of town, Commonwealth kind of numbers, I don't know if it's Commonwealth out there, but like 10 years probation, I wouldn't want to do 10 years probation. You'll hear a number like that. But if you get here with a 20 year bid and a nigga saying, yo, you do 10 and got 10 years probation, then the nigga start rethinking it like, all right, fuck it. I got five in already. I only got to do five and 10 years probation. Fuck it, I'll just take it easy when I get home. But you still walking on eggshells for 10 years. Yeah. That's like Meek Mills. Well, how long was his probation? 20 years type shit. Right, then he got caught that's, for what? Like doing a wheelie on a yeah, bike and then they sent him back? But that's yeah. Philly. That's that's Commonwealth State. Hmm. I got locked up in PA. We had a little bit of work on us. We was locked up for like two, three months type shit. Damn. Because I used to get money out of town. I'm not like these other rappers. Oh, I, do, do, I, do. I really was out of town. PA, certain places doing things like I was really not glorifying it, but I was really in the street like that. I was taking out of town trips. Yeah. I was doing that. Uh -huh. Well, uh, YNW Melly, he had a hung jury in his murder case. Yeah, and then they came back with more evidence. I read that. That's well, what. and they got him for witness tampering as yeah. well. And 1090 Jake said that that's a life sentence in Florida, that by itself. Yeah, Florida got, you know, they got the... This is draconian laws over there. is different. Like, yeah. people think, you know, some people rather get locked up in New York than Florida. Like, like I told you, Philly and all that, that's Commonwealth, PA. That's Commonwealth State. You get you get locked up with a little bit of something, you get out the next day, out there, you be locked up for a couple of months for a little bit of work, some leftover work or some shit. So, it's different. Florida, they got stay in your ground and all that, but they tough laws. They laws is tough, geez. Yeah. Yeah, that man. Like, it's it's wild. They yeah, so it, it's it's They do be hitting niggas with them football numbers out there. So Yeah, no, it, it's wild, man. And the fact that you would think that after a hung jury they would give him a bail cuz he'd been locked up for like 3 years now. But nah. He's still locked up. They're about to start the second trial. Got well, pushed well, back Florida, to March. You know Florida do what they want, man. They tough yeah. out there, man. They do what the fuck they want. You know what I'm saying? That shit is it, it get crazy out there. They laws are crazy. Well, since our last interview, Keefe D got locked up for yeah, the murder no, of Tupac. No Keefe D question. I was thinking about coming here with my lawyer because of that. Doing these <laughs> live interviews. I was thinking about that You're shit. You're thinking about it right there? Yeah. You'll just answer all the questions well, for Keefe you? Keefe was crazy. Wasn't he selling bullets online? And nah. He, I had heard some rumors about the that. The bullets I, that... I've seen that on the internet, No. Nope. Yeah, that, that, that doesn't sound right. No. Um, but he did write a book. 
about his involvement in Tupac's murder. And then he did an interview with me twice. He also did yeah, no key V D questions. A huh? bunch of a bunch of you don't want to talk about it? What, Keefe D? Yeah. Oh, no, I was just saying no Keefe D type oh, questions. Oh, type questions. Yeah. I got, got it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, were you surprised that he got arrested 27 years later? No. Nah. Why? Because there's no statute of limitations when it comes to murder. Right. Everybody knows that. Motherfucker come get you. They came and got motherfucker for Jim Master J, right? Right. Uh, Whitey Bulger. That Remember was- they got him? Yeah, 40 years there's, later? There's no statute of limitations on a murder. A case could go cold, but that don't mean homicide could never come back. They could come back. So if you're sitting there and you giving the information, what do you think is going to happen? You was in a car. You was a part of it. You was an accessory to murder. That's okay, you said you passed the gun to the shooter. Yeah, so that makes you... So in your mind, if you tell a story, right, and you're talking about being in a car with somebody, of somebody that got killed, which is a famous guy, that means the most famous guy, right? So if you know the law, because a lot of people got to know the law, that means that you're making yourself an accessory to murder. So when you look at Keefe D, people look real street niggas look at him like, yo, the nigga told on himself. Yeah, that's like that's like niggas that sell drugs and talk on the phone. Mm. You telling on yourself. You sell drugs while you talking on the phone. Now, I hang around a lot of lawyers, so they, they, they always tell you phone, phones and snitches is how niggas go down. Well, no, listen, I, I remember- but, um, but now, everybody's telling on themselves because we have the internet, and I understand internet, you, you, people build their shit up by doing shit on the internet, showing money, you get bitches, showing jewelry, showing this, but there's a gift and a curse to the internet because you'll show, now you got the jack boys out your house. You got niggas that don't got it, that want what you got. Oh, you right. got a Richard Milley? Now you got niggas on you. When back in the days when a nigga had it, he'll hide it. Because he don't want a nigga to know he got two, three million in the house. Now listen, uh, me, me and Matt Hoff were talking on the phone today. And um, we were just talking about different shit. And we started talking about Biggs from Rockefeller, right? And we were talking about his whole situation. And he was like, oh, didn't get Biggs get caught with like 300 pounds of weed? And I'm like, no, nah, that's not what happened because I interviewed Biggs about this situation. I thought that's what did happen. No, no, no. What, what happened with Biggs was that he had a man who was growing weed and he had another man that needed a bunch of weed. So I think he got on a three-way with him. I was like, okay, yo, this is so-and-so. I'm introducing y'all. Y'all go do what you got to do. I'm not part of it. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, you're my homie, so here you go. Not knowing that one of the dudes had a, you know, his phone was tapped. And now, yeah, now you he part. gets part of this conspiracy. Right. Yeah. And now Biggs goes to prison, even though he's a multimillionaire Rockefeller co-founder. Right. Who's not doing because, any sort of crimes. Yo, look, but, when I did my skit bid for um, Passport Fraud, I got a chance because I had a lot of time to read six months. I was in a hole for a minute. And um, uh, I got a chance to read the Fed guidelines. And that right there is a charge. Yeah. If you're if I say, yo, you could go get the work from here, he got the bricks or he got the weed. You're a part of that. That's a charge. No, I know. And the thing is I even read something in the guidelines where a guy because it'll tell you true stories Mm -hmm. of people. And and that's how it'll express it. When you read the Fed Guidelines books, and it tells a story about a guy. He sold the police fake work. He showed the feds fake work. Like it was like fucking baking soda or whatever, or flour. The Fed still charged him it was with the initial yeah. attempt to sell. No, yeah. they charged him with conspiracy to sell, to sell. cocaine still. Right. So when it comes to Fed, you're dealing with motherfuckers that you don't want to deal with. Like they, now listen, they're dangerous. I, I always think about that. Because you know, I got, you know, every so often one of my homies be like, hey, I'm in Kelly, you know, I got a chick, you know, who likes to do coke. You know anyone? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't know anyone. I mean I'm not I mean, I'm not getting involved in none of that I mean, shit. If somebody's phone could be tapped, I guess I would I would say uh as long as you don't say nothing stupid on there, the feds ain't gonna fuck with you. Man. Cause when I, you cause when I you, don't implicate myself in none of that look, shit. Because when you look at um Crippy, for instance. Okay. You know Crippy. He's yeah. supposed to do the interview with him, but I don't know what happened with 6 9 shit six or whatever. 6 9 shit, yeah. Right? Because 6 9 was around or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I seen they build a statue of the motherfucker in Cuba. That's crazy. That's crazy. I saw that. Oh, fuck it. Yeah. He must have donated some money in Cuba. Right. But um, um, with that situation, Crippy 
when they ran in Treyway Crib, and this is how real it is. This like how in tune I'm into the streets. When they ran in Treyway Crib, Crippy called me for the lawyer. Okay. So I was gonna get Scott Lehman on the phone, or maybe Bob Macedonia, or any of the lawyers on 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 speed dial or whatever. So I, I was gonna call Scott or Bob or whoever, state, federal. But first thing came Scott Lehman or maybe a uh, uh, Don Florio, because you know you know all the you know all the people, right? Mm -hmm. So I called Scott, right? So I didn't get no answer from Scott. I don't know if he was fucking playing golf or doing whatever. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Nah, lawyers are all playing golf on the course yeah. or whatever. So he calls me back, and as soon as he calls me back, he says, I say, yo, I couldn't get Scott on the phone. I don't know what he's doing. He goes, yo, I'm not calling for Treyway. Feds is running in my house now. So when they ran and every, when the feds come, they ran in everybody crib minutes apart. We're going to run in 6 9 crib, Treyway crib, Crippy crib, right? So he's on the phone with me telling me, yo, they ran in Treyway crib. He called me back two minutes later. They was at his crib. Yeah. They was at his crib. That's how ill the feds is, nigga. They ran in his crib. He's calling for Treyway. Yo, the feds just ran in Treyway crib. Then he's calling me two minutes later. I'm like, yo, I couldn't get the lawyer on the phone. Yo, they in front of my crib now. What should I do? Yo, nigga, go out there. He just got shot in the stomach. Shout the crib. He just came home and all that. He got shot in the stomach. I'm telling him, I'm like, yo, bro, you better go out there before they throw a fucking flash bomb in there. <laughs> Scare the shit out your moms and shit in there because right. mom's cool. Yeah. You, you better come out and surrender because once they throw that flash bomb in there, your moms have a fucking... Heart attack, the kids start bugging, flash bomb, break your window. You know how that shit is. When they coming, they coming correct. They coming at y'all niggas like, y'all super killers and super shooters. So he, he went out and he surrendered. But look, my phone could have been tapped, but I ain't say nothing stupid. I just said, I'm going to call a lawyer. I right. don't talk dumb on the phone. There's well, nothing for me So what I'm saying about, is when someone says, hey, I'm not doing nothing the only one who's got some cocaine, no, I don't. Nah. Nah. Nah, I'm good. I don't. I don't know anybody. Yeah. Sorry. We learned that from being on a block because that's an initial charge. Like, say if you come to the block, somebody wanted to cop back in the days, and you point this way. That's a staring charge. If police see you point, you told a fiend to go get this work here, that's called staring. Oh. That's what that's called. That's a state charge and a federal charge. Yeah, I mean, staring. Casanova's locked up right now over setting some shit up, allegedly. But I mean, he got convicted. I mean, Yo, he, listen, he, he listen, pled out, is, so it is, is what he got 15 is, years. Listen, this is New York. We got more feds than anybody. The federal building is <laughs> up the block here, up the block here. Yep. You know, I, I I I had a chance to do a skid bit federal, state. The feds don't play, man. When they want you, they're going to come get you. They The feds' job is the, they want to what eradicate every gang in New York City. Clean up New York City where it be the safest place to live. In the 80s, this is one of the worst places to live, yeah. right? In the '90s, they started cleaning it up, right? Yeah, thanks to uh, Giuliani. Giuliani, all the came. Rico shit, who's Dickens. now being charged with Rico himself. Yeah, so look, now he's being charged with Rico. Giuliani, right? Boom. Giuliani was tough on crack, coke. He was tough on laws. Police on the, on was beating mafia. motherfuckers up. Yeah. We love David Dinkins. David Dinkins, we had, oh, we was clapping, oh. Everybody was in the streets loving it. Giuliani came, fucked New York up. Then after Giuliani to the 2000s, shit started getting cleaned up. Their job now is to what? Clean up the streets. Is Brooklyn getting clean right now? Is it? Yes. Mm. You been to Dumbo? Not recently, no. You you been to Williamsburg? Mm, I've been through there. You been parts of, parts of parts Red slow. Star? No. Cause, yeah, because it's, it's, different it's, now, it's huh? getting nice. Okay. Cause, what, what, cause, what about Brownsville? Brownsville, I think in due time it deal, it'll get cleaned they'll up. clean it up because you because because these indictments is taking so many niggas off the streets. Yeah. So you one summer you 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 could be in Brownsville, you could see, and I witnessed it. You could see thirty niggas outside. Then you come next week, and thirty niggas are gone. Yo, where them niggas went? Oh, they all got indicted. Oh, got locked up. Yep. Because the because the Fed because the because what what when you turn into a civilian, right? Raising your family, regular person, living your life. All you want is a peace of mind. Well, you so know, when motherfuckers start shooting and innocent people get killed, the feds are gonna come. They their job is to clean shit up. Well, you know, when when Keefe D got arrested, a lot of the questions that came up 
you know, and I did a bunch of interviews like, you know, Pierce Morgan and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were like, well, do you think that Puffy is going to get caught up in this case at all? Because according to Keefe, of course, you yeah, know, yeah, of course. there was supposed to be a million dollar payment for the murder of Tupac, you know, right. blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, I don't, I don't think so. You know, I, I don't think so because to try to use a hearsay situation over a 27 year old case with a multimillionaire like Puffy that's going to have the best defense that money could buy, I don't think is ever going to happen. But you know, I remember I was talking to someone about this, and to me, what I don't quite understand yeah. is that when I looked at this situation, it's like, all right, so Suge is pressing on Puffy, right? He got all his pyru bloods and everything else like that. Puffy, who's a multimillionaire, decides to align himself with the Southside Crips. So now you got this whole gang shit that's going back and forth. Me personally, if, if I had a situation where I knew like a certain gang was out to get me or whatever else, I would just cooperate with the police. And I'd be like, nah, fuck that. I would, I would get off duty or active police officers at security or, or ex-CIA dudes. If I had to press charges, I would press charges, whatever else. Puffy's not no gangster, but he went and went this gangster route, which ultimately, which I think culminated in Biggie getting killed. You know what I'm saying? I understand what you're saying. You, he could have went a civilian route, but maybe he didn't feel like a civilian because you might could say he's a civilian, but he probably, Puffy don't feel like he's a civilian. He had Wolf with him. He had yeah, Roger he had Bonds with him. But like, he, why? He had why is, is, with him. is my question. Why? My whole thing is, Big got killed because he wasn't supposed to be in L.A. That's just my, my opinion. But it was probably some gang shit, right? Probably. I don't know for a I fact. Just feel, I just feel like It Big, wasn't a random shooting. After Pot got killed, Biggie had, to me, Biggie had no business being in L.A. That's just all I say when I look at Biggie and Tupac. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Then when you look at Pac's situation, it's just an everyday situation. You a rapper, you fuck a nigga up, you get shot. Pac got killed over some gang shit yeah. 100%. But what I'm saying is Pac was a real street nigga. Biggie was a street nigga, right? You could, you would say, right? Yeah. But he was hanging around some street shit or whatever you want. Because you hanging around some street shit, you're going to get into some street shit. Pop, that was fucked up the way he died because beat a nigga out, a nigga went and got the gun. Once you put your hands on a nigga, ain't no telling what a nigga going to do or what he going to get. Or you put your hand on his kid, his wife, his money, you don't know what. Because for every action, there's a what? Reaction. There you go. So Pop's death was a reaction. Biggie shit. He shouldn't even have been there. Or if he was going to be in there, throw that motherfucker in some shit, bulletproof windows. Or just surround him with police. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just don't understand that. Because to me, it's like, look. like well, Biggie was a nigga straight from Best Star. He don't want to be surrounded by police. <laughs> yeah, he had yeah, but look at the price that he paid for it. Definitely 100%. Look at the price that he paid. But my whole thing is, my way of thinking is why I have Biggie even in fucking L.A.? After Tupac died, y'all had him in parks doing interviews and shit. Like, I just wouldn't have had Biggie in L.A. I would have kept him in New York. No disrespect to the Source Awards, but fuck the Source Awards. I would have kept him there. Yeah, man. I, I, look. I, would have, I wouldn't have had Biggie in L.A. With, without that. And then us coming up, 50 and everybody, what you made, what you made niggas think they get bulletproof trucks for? Or well, for yeah. Biggie. But, did, but didn't 50 have, like... You know, like Green Berets and all types of military no, dudes. Had like nothing but street niggas around. Niggas be making. He never. Up. He never had none of that shit. I never seen no Green Beret. There'll be security that Interscope sent. Well, I remember there was a white when I first met him in game. I remember he had this white dude that had like a bunch of tats on him and stuff like that. He didn't look like a like I a mean, gangster. I mean, there was probably me. some Jay Z had white CIA niggas. I don't know, like, but from what I seen, like, when you look, when I look at some security, they look they're there for the crowd to control. And they're there to de-escalate situations. Because it comes to a point where artists get something called a lawsuit. So if you keep fucking niggas up and letting the entourage beat niggas' ass. Exactly. So niggas used to try to flip it. Oh, yo, niggas are with the police. And yo, this white boy that came to the block, they police and CIA niggas. Nah, there's a way to do business once you make a certain amount of fucking millions. If you fuck somebody up, you're going to get laws, a exactly. lawsuit. If you put hands on somebody, because... You're going to fucking, they're going to sue you. Let me put it like this. When Takeoff got killed, right. when you look at that whole situation, the dice game is going bad, motherfuckers is arguing, Quavo security with his dreadlocks, you know what I'm saying, pulls out his gun, 
nobody cares about the gun. In fact, people start pulling out their own guns. You take away that that homie security, that homeboy security, and you put an actual police officer in that situation. The police officer is seeing that shit is getting out of hand. He pulls out his badge and he says, everyone calm down. You think anyone would have started shooting with a cop right there? No, you, you, I, I understand what you you're saying. You see what I'm saying? Takeoff would be having shows I, I and totally, living his life I right totally now. I totally agree with you. You know, you you, you get but, what you pay for. You, but some niggas but the, probably don't want to move like that. You understand? And fuck all come, that, man. When fuck it comes to that. situations, fuck for all me, that. I have active police officers that I use for security sometimes. And in I'm New not York. mad at you. And, and when I come, and up I will here, clearly say. Look, and, and this is a motherfucker who's gotten into it with people who shot at people, whatever else. I know that if anything goes down, he is not. He is not only. I remember I had a conversation with him. He said, "NYPD is the biggest police force in the world. You name me one gangster that's going to go up against NYPD." Nah, I don't know nobody. Nobody. <laughs> nobody. Motherfuckers have killed somebody in the hood before. They a- NYPD has surface-to-air missiles. They can shoot a plane out the sky. I don't care how many extendos or switches you got. NYPD's got some heavier yeah, shit than you. Niggas ain't going against the police like that. That's what I'm saying. So just be smart. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, no, I believe, I believe a lot of artists would be here if they picked the correct security. Exactly. And it could be armed security. It could be police, whatever you are. You on a whole nother level, you, you're you worth something. Yeah. But one thing I've learned, and I've learned from being in the game, and I, that's why I always shout out 50, because people, places, and things play a major thing in life. Like, I don't need to be on the corner chilling with niggas. I don't need to be somewhere where I gotta be a gun. I could be go to the Calabasas Club, chill with you, have a nice lunch. White guys are looking at me like, what the fuck I'm doing here? <laughs> you know, me yeah. in Hollywood. Right, that's you know all what I'm good. saying? But Listen. like, I just travel the world. And, and and you know what's the thing about overseas? You know what's the thing about Melbourne, Sydney, Perth, Australia, um, uh, where else, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, all these places. They look at us crazy because you know why they, we have they have less guns. Yeah, there's guns there. Well, Don't get me it's, wrong. It's safe over there. But for you to get a pistol in Australia might uh, probably be a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's less guns. So when you go off there, I don't have to wear my poo shiesty or be low. Me and Murdo, we're dancing. We're having the time of my life. We're in Abu Dhabi. We're in Dubai. We're in Australia. We're in Paris. We 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 went to all these places and I'm enjoying the culture and all the stuff and don't got to worry about watching my back. No, listen. You come to America, yeah. it's a million guns and I love America. You right. know what I'm saying? Look, look. But I, I'm just being honest with you like, out there, it's a little more sense of freedom yeah. because you don't have to worry about a motherfucker having a gun on you. So when you go to places like Florida and Atlanta, come on, you know those are those are gun states. Right. You, look, you look, treading listen, on listen, water. When I, you know when I interviewed Game, mm-hmm. like, I knew Wack was going to be there at the interview, right? Now, now me and Wack, we, we got on the phone, everything good, but, you know, there's still a history with us. Right. Plus game is crazy as well. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. So me and game haven't seen each other in a bunch of years. Right. You don't know. You asked the wrong question. You know what I mean? So Things might you go had, left. You had security guys? I had two securities in there. We had two guys in there posted up with guns. And, and you know, just to let everyone know that, hey, we're all going to be calm Yo, but and cool. Vlad, that's but it was all good. Everyone but, hugged but, it out. But, we took pictures together. There Vlad, was no but problem. You know but Vlad, I'm still not fucking around. You know what, Vlad? That's one thing I respect about you. You know, I wish I wish Pop Smoke had security yeah. around to yeah. Airbnb the mansion he was in. Bethlehem. Exactly. I wish PNB Rock. Rock had security. I wish XXX had security. Yes. I wish Vaughn had proper security. Where, you yeah, know, I heard somebody his security told him, ran. That's well, what I heard. Well, security was telling him we're not going to... Because what I learned is security and... Uh, that's why I say having... Uh, nobody wants a big homie. When they're already the big homie, they got millions already. These young kids don't give a fuck what I say. Kid might be up 10 more million than me, two more million than me. He might look at it like, why the fuck I'm listening to him? But Vaughn shouldn't even have been there. Let's take Vaughn to the hotel. This is why if I was management, I wouldn't even let my artist jump. What is he jumping out the car for? Right. You know what I'm saying? Proper security. I wish a lot of these artists that got killed, I wish take off. You know what I'm saying? I wish... He had proper security that said, yo, you know what? Once the gun got pulled, let's get him out of here. Get him to the vehicle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I wish this for a lot of artists. But for me, it's people, places, and things. I'm not going to Roscoe's and eat and chill and sit out. I'm going to send my man in there. 
a homie. Yeah. He's my assistant. I'm going to send up, him. Brings it go back. Go and get it because that's how we had to move with 50 because we had so much beef. So we just serve to use the meeting yeah. a certain way. When I go downstairs, the car's right downstairs. Yeah. The bulletproof downstairs. When I when I have a, a, a party, I try to go to one party. If I got an after party, I go outside, do the past the party, boom, I get my money, boom, I'm out. I don't have to do nothing extra, go to another party. I'm not getting paid for. If you're not making no money, yep. if it don't make no sense, it don't need to be there. Because mm-hmm. you're going to get smoked. You could be a rapper, civilian, everything, but yeah. people, places, and things. I hang with my lawyer. My lawyer's at parties in the Hamptons. I don't have to deal, go to the hood where a nigga's looking at me awkward, like a nigga mad at me because I made it, or a bitch is mad at me because I didn't do something for to, for her family or her brother. Or, you know what I'm saying? I don't got time for it, and I'm grown. If you fuck with me, you fuck with me. If you don't fuck with me, I don't give a fuck. Right. I don't. Because yeah. it's all about buying real estate, F- fucking traveling the world, taking care of your kids, your family, fucking buying crypto, or whatever you want to do, or whatever which way to better yourself, or or working on your brand, which I'm at Vlad now. Yep. Shout to all my people on tour. Shout to Flav who was here. Shout to Curtis. Shout to Fifty. Shout to Lightro, Uncle Murder. Shout to the whole band. Um. Shout to all the dancers. Shout to 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 uh, production. Shout to Big Mo, shout to Angela, both Angelas. Um, shout to Julia, the dancers, Daisy, Mallory Taylor. Um, uh, the list goes on and on. Shout to Jeremiah and his camp. Mm-hmm. I had a great time for six months where, you know, you wake up, you know, best hotel, so your bed is always done <laughs> for you. Yep. You know, they, and in the Four Seasons, they're going to do your bed for no reason twice. Right. You know? I love the Four Seasons. Yeah. I don't have to. Yeah, I love it. Room I love service. That's my 20, favorite hotel. I love when room service twenty four hours is order. I got you know I got my TV hooked up, my fire stick hooked up, watching TV. I enjoyed it. It was an experience because one thing I learned about life is you know what's the main thing about life? Live in the moment. Just like right now, I'm doing this interview. I'm excited. I haven't done it in six months. I'm living in the Vlad TV moment. And I appreciate what Vlad, your followers did for me. And when I go overseas and people be like, yo, Vlad. Because they don't really talk about all the other interviews I do. They mention Drink Champs, but everything is is Vlad TV. Yeah, well, you've been on here the most. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, but it's a big platform overseas. That's what it tells me. Nice. Even though I've been on here the most, but it tells me yeah. overseas. We do really our thing. Like Vlad. Kodak Black mm-hmm. got arrested again. Damn. Uh, he was asleep. In his car. Right. And I guess when they went to arrest him, he tried to eat a mouthful of cocaine. Allegedly. Allegedly. He got on a, on Instagram Live and said that he don't do coke, but he does meth. Oh, shit, he said that? Damn. Yeah. And now he's back in prison or in jail again because he, he violated his probation. Yeah. Now, you got to think Trump got him out originally. Yeah, Trump got him. Yeah, this Trump, time. Yeah, Trump this, got him out, but yeah. you keep fucking up. You a big artist to get pardoned. Yeah. But you know what? When I look at uh, Kodak, it seems like his mom is a good lady. I'm Haitian. Mm-hmm. Haitians are big on prayers. He's Haitian too, yeah. They all pray for you. Kodak is just, he got so many people praying for him. I think sometimes he's like me. We think we're unstoppable. Mm. But you know, sometimes Kodak, maybe he got to sit down and relax, but he's still, it's not like, He's not going to come out and not make a bag. He's one of the biggest artists, bro. I got it. I mean, do you think that, not not style-wise, but just overall, is he the DMX of this generation? I feel like he's like... Someone who's got a huge fan yeah, base. I feel like Kodak... Who is always messing up, Kodak, who's got serious drug issues, constantly in and out of jail. Yeah, I feel like he, it didn't start off with drug issues. It started off with just a him issue, him being a hood nigga and just... Like me, I can't never say I'm better than somebody when I got out of jail and went to jail the next day. I fucked up too. Oh, the passport shit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I grew up a fuck up. You know what I'm saying? I understand. He grew up a fuck up. He makes mistakes. I went to jail, went to jail the next day. It's the same thing with Yayo, fucking, and Kodak. I'm just what you, it just doesn't, when people see the interviews, they think, you know, you're higher than the average person or whatever. Mm-hmm. But as for music, like you said, to get pardoned by by Trump, to make big records with Bruno Mars, Gucci Man, all these big artists, to be praised and have a fan base, just got to get together because P 
People love Kodak Black. He's a fucking icon out here. He is. So, but you know, his story is his story. I just, you know, wish him well, free him. He come out, hopefully he can learn from the experience, make some more good music, cause he has a fan base, and he's always gonna be able to get show money. He's at every fucking Rolling Loud festival. He is. He's at every fucking festival. Everybody like Kodak, and his personality is cool. He fucking dance, have fun, but he's a gangster at the same time too. I like Kodak. Never got I a think chance everyone to meet likes him. Kodak, but it's just like yeah. you got to shake your head when you see this over and over again. I mean, again. he's a young nigga with money. He'll get it together. You know, we all make mistakes. Well, DMX never got it together. To be fair, and, well, and listen, that's true. We we paid DMX a bunch of money for an interview, and he died before doing the interview. Mm -hmm. He he had a drug overdose and died. Like right. you know, at the end of the day, it's whatever. You know, it's money, but it just goes to show how bad of a shape he was in and I remember I talked to his manager about it and he was like yo your money probably you know from his point of view he's like your money kept him alive a lot longer because that money was used to keep him out of New York because he was like in Florida and Atlanta whatever because once he got back in New York then he got back with his old people started taking drugs again and then well, yeah you know, overdosed and died a, a lot of people have demons a lot. It's, it's like yo bro uh, you haven't been in the program? I've been in the program, drug program before. Never. I've never had and, drug issues. And, and, well, I was a drug dealer, so I got caught selling drugs. Yeah. So every time I got caught, I would take the program. Okay. You know, 12 steps to ASAP and everything. Oh, you'd year. have to take the 12-step program? Yeah. Okay. I mean, if I got caught with a little bit of drugs, of course, I'm going to say I'm using this shit. Yeah. Oh, you know? okay. Oh, that's, no, I'm that's a drug a dealer. Okay. Yeah, I was a cop out for every drug dealer. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm, I'm an some... addict. That's why I'm dealing. Yeah, just even like I did shock true. and everything. I'm an addict. Have so... you ever Have you ever done cocaine yourself? Nah, never. Never crack, in my life. Nothing. I look you in my eyes and tell you crack cocaine. Never. Yeah, I've never done. You... Co I've never done cocaine yeah, myself. For you to sell now, drugs, I've done mushrooms and acid I'm not, and ecstasy I'm not and stuff it, like that. Because yeah. listen, in Australia, I've seen plenty of cocaine. It was parties. You do what you want to do. Just now, it's more. Dangerous. Yeah, you got fentanyl. fentanyl. Yeah. So you could party. People partying, do the wild dances. We was in Australia. Everybody was looking at us crazy. <laughs> they did the cocaine. And it's cool. You could do what you want because I'm not going to judge you. Yeah. You know, you, I, when people start doing the cocaine dance, it's funny. <laughs> you know, but now it's like a roll of the dice. Yeah. Me, my thing is weed. I love weed. Yeah. I got my strand coming soon. Shout to Green Label. Shout to Steve. Shout to... Uh, Everybody that's a part of the uh, the movement, you know, Lemonade, you know, Burner, shout to Wiz, got a song with them, 420, we we coming crazy with the strain. So um, I'm a weed guy, I'm a weed connoisseur, I like marijuana, yeah, me like too. cocaine is not my thing. Not I don't, my thing either. I don't like nothing to fuck with my nose. I sold crack, so I would never do crack, Yeah. you know, and I'm not glorifying that, it was a fucked up thing to do, but you know, it made me who I am today. Yep. That's what I was trying to tell you, I don't glorify being on Rikers Island or going to the feds or my life is real. I did this, I did that. It's just a part of life and it 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 taught me. Cause my bids were skid bids. They wasn't long bids. It yeah. wasn't nothing crazy. Well, John Moran is back. Yeah, shout out to him. And he's yeah. dominating. And he's going crazy, of course, man. He's dominating. Uh Lil Wayne thinks that he's the obvious choice to replace LeBron as the face of the NBA once LeBron, you know, retires. Mm, Lil Wayne knows basketball. I think John Morant definitely, you know, it was, it, it went, Steph Curry was the face for a while. I mean. True. I mean, when you look at John Morant, you look like how all the young niggas look in the streets, man. So it's like relatable. That's like when Steph came, Steph Curry, he's not a big guy like LeBron, but he could fucking shoot from half court and dribble like a motherfucker. So, I mean, every other while it's going to be a face, it's going to be, a, there's definitely be a new face. But he's definitely one of them. Yeah, no, he's definitely one of them. He's and and hopefully one. that's the last gun shit we ever hear from him. Yeah, forever. I think it's I think it's over for him. He missed a lot of games, you know. Yeah, I think he understands. And what's interesting though is that just yesterday the chair you're sitting in, I had Sebastian Telfair. Oh shit. shit you know what that is, right? Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, after that whole situation, remember like the whole when he got his chain snatched in front of Justin's yeah, and then yeah, Fabulous yeah. got shot. Yeah, yeah. Not to say that the two things are related, yeah, but it was yeah, a, a fucked that. up bad yeah. situation. The next night, he lost a $20 million Adidas deal. Yeah, of course. That's all right. And that's then, what, that's you know, why we, this, this, and this is what I learned from Fifth. Because when, when 50 transitioned from 50 Cent, the nigga on the block, we got the pistols, we in the van, we got the bulletproof vest to transition to 50, the businessman. When you realize, yo, we got endorsement deals. We got this. You'll lose everything. Yes. How many deals they said did he lose? 18? Yeah. 
Well, there you go. Yeah, Sean John is not being uh, stopped at uh, Macy's anymore. It did, it did. A, a, a school that Puffy started has distanced the. Well, did, <laughs> has did, said that he's well, no did, longer part of this. Well, there you go. Revolt has made him step down and, from and, chairman. And it, and it could be allegations, and you're exactly. So it's like for me, I'm like like how you said you're self made. Nobody could really take anything from you. I like the idea of that. And when I look at Fifty, all his deals was like self made. But he was also smart. People, places, and things play a major thing in whatever you do. If you got an endorsement for $20 million with Adidas, of course they don't want you in a shootout. Right. Right. Course, I mean, because they course, happen to a uh, Of course they Gilbert don't want Arenas. you. Of course they don't want you carrying a gun. Yeah. Of course, if if is if if you got to deal with Adidas, of course they don't want you to slander anybody like a Kanye. Not saying he's wrong or right, but of course. These corporations ain't gonna want that shit. Well, Everybody I, I think in that, and, and what he said, he was wrong, and you know, of course, what he said was yeah, wrong. Well, what, but what he I'm said saying was wrong. Is that he's now apologizing company, and trying to work his right, way out of it. Exactly, because the what company, if you're under any, listen, if I'm under any big corporation and they're giving me a chance to get money that I dreamed of in my life, I'm gonna be respectful and feel blessed towards that deal, and be respectful for the people I work for. And it's not kissing yeah. ass, you know. It's not kissing ass. It's just we want to see Kanye with with what more Kanye's out. We want to see uh uh what's my man named Pharrell at um Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton. And I yeah. like that Louis Vuitton X Lovers jacket he got. I love that shit. Love I seen it. him with it. It's a it's a Louis Vuitton. It's an XL yeah, Lovers. No, I, I was just at the store yesterday. Yeah. I seen how much they want for it. Don't well, say five. I, I'll tell you this. Don't say five grand. No, listen, I'll crazy. tell you this because I was talking to my salesperson over for there. It? Shout out to my man Mustafa Shout over to there. Mustafa, at Louis. He, he, you know what I'm talking about? You, huh? you, you, say, you know, you have the same yeah, salesperson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you talking okay, about. Okay, right. Yeah. So I was there yesterday to get a, a beanie, and he and that yesterday was the day that the um, Pharrell shit dropped. They said they did six hundred thousand in sales at that store in one day. I'm telling you that that lover's jacket he got. I, I definitely like that. You that. I seen him wear it. It's so funny. I seen Pharrell wear it, and um, I'm like, yo, that shit is fire. He wore it somewhere. He was on something, and I was like, and then I seen it on Louis Vuitton, but probably a couple of grand. But it's yeah. it's fire. I definitely love it. Yeah, I mean, look, yo, I love yo, I love to see because like Virgil, we yeah. wanted to see who's going to take Virgil's spot, it's and Pharrell. of course we would have been excited when Kanye, when Kanye would have did it, Virgil or Pharrell, we'd be anybody would be. Well, yeah, they were, they were going to pick Kanye after what he just pulled. Because so. style is just like some people just yeah, some people, some just, people just got it, man. Some people, some people, people are yeah. just very good at dressing, you know, and some people yeah. are just go get a stylist. Right. Like I could tell you a funny story. Okay. And you're not going to believe this. Okay. It was, it was a movie pit, man. And I never forgot because it was me, Fifty, Snoop, a couple of other people, and ASAP Rocky was there. And ASAP Rocky had a security, and I swear, and you can you can ask him this. This is a straight life thing, and he had he's the first time I seen a guy with the man purse. Right. This is years ago. Yeah. This might be in like oh seven. I swear to God, you can find I can find a picture. I'll find a picture for you. It's me, Snoop, ASAP, and it's the first time I seen a guy with with the man purse. Besides being in Europe, because you know in Europe. A lot of trends start there. Like the skinny jeans was out there years ago. Right. When we was wearing baggy, they was wearing skinny. We was mm -hmm. laughing at them. Now we're all wearing, we're all wearing skinny fitted jeans. jeans. jeans exactly. Right? So ASAP Rocky had the bag, and everybody's looking 50 Snoop. Everybody was like, what the fuck is going on? He got money in that shit or whatever? And swear to you not. And ASAP, he'll tell you. You can ask him. He pulled me to the side. He said, yeah, yo, this is the new shit. You want to start seeing motherfuckers with this. Motherfuckers don't know what I'm doing. And I always I always said, ASAP is the first nigga to do the man purse shit. Yeah. Swear to God. He's like, niggas don't know nothing about this, yay. Swear to God. Yeah. That's Because ASAP Rocky, when you think about fashion. Yeah, he's one kinda, of the top guys. Yeah. He's a connoisseur. You see yeah. him at all the fashion shows and shit yeah, like man. that. But he's the first motherfucker. This is probably 07, 06. <laughs> he had a man purse. And I'm looking like, well, no, we can't. Is... He wasn't even out in 07, 06. ASAP Rocky had, was out. It was like maybe probably 2010. 2010. Yeah, two, probably 2010. Yeah. Well, look, let me tell you, man purse, you wouldn't even think that you never seen nobody with it. Yeah. He was the first person I seen with it. He was like, yo, trust me, yo, this is going to be the shit. We was, he put me to the side like, I know you looking like, why well, I got this. But he was like, yo, I'm telling you, this is going to be the shit. And I was like, oh, shit. 
So whenever I see the man purses, I think of ASAP Rocky because he's the first nigga I've seen do it. And now it's a fucking trend. They got all kind of man purses that are great, niggas. You know what I mean? And, and don't sleep on a nigga because a nigga have a gun in that shit. Don't think. <laughs> no, I see dudes with man purses. Not, not my don't thing. Think, not, don't think because a motherfucker got a man thing. purse or a man satchel, that ain't, they, that ain't a big 45 in there. I done seen it. <laughs> Little niggas in the Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens. Got the man, the, the Louis shit with the big ass gun in that shit. Uh, I remember I was listening to 50's book. I was listening to the audio uh -huh. version of, right. of 50's book. Uh -huh. And he was talking about a situation with Shaw Money XL. Right. Because when, when 50 got shot, mm -hmm. he was staying at Shaw Money's house and he was recording in his basement. Yeah, we all, well, he wasn't staying there. We all would just go there. Go and there and record. Yeah, right. We'll, we'll crash out on the couches. Yeah, down exactly. And he was but he wasn't physically like living there. Nothing like that. Okay, right. Oh, so he was he was recording over there. Yeah, right? we all was there. Got we it. all recorded. Got it. Yeah, Shout I mean, I don't remember exactly how, yeah, how it went, Shout but it was something like that, right? So he was saying how when they were kind of finalizing all the paperwork around the album, Shaw Money wanted to get like a big check for studio time. Mm -hmm. And 50 was like, well, we never, you never said that you're going to charge me for this, but like, why don't you just take a couple of points off the album mm -hmm. instead? And he said that Shy just would not budge and would, no, yeah, I, I, want, I want this, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, he, yeah. Said, he said, I want whatever, 100,000 or something for studio right, time, right, whatever, right, whatever. Definitely. And so 50 was like, fine, give him that 100,000. He said, number one, it was one of the worst business decisions ever because he would have made way more money because Get Rich or Die Trying went diamond. Yeah, well, <laughs> you diamond, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And he said that he really kind of stopped rocking with Shaw Money after the situation. Right. Is that is that accurate from your from your point of view? Yeah, I mean, yeah, if he said it, yeah. Yeah. That was exactly. accurate from my point of view. You know, and when I read it, it didn't really surprise me because me and Shaw Money were cool at one point. I remember he lived literally across the street from me. When I when I lived in Silver Towers in Manhattan, he lived in this apartment building across right. the street. Shaw Money was a good guy. I just I, feel I, let, let me just finish. Yeah. I, I went to his house. We hung out, smoked weed, talked, whatever else. And then I remember out of nowhere, I would see him talk shit about me online. Just talk shit, talk well, shit I've on seen, multiple you know what's occasions. Crazy? I've seen him talk shit about me online too. So it's crazy. And I never did nothing to him. I never did nothing but to I, him he either. He said something, something crazy about me, but I, I, I never took it personal because like, I'm yeah, yo, like, I mean, people's opinions don't really mean shit to me. You know what I mean? But with Shy Money, um, I feel like he was good at what he did. You know what I'm saying? He was good management and he supported niggas. And he was the nigga that came, got me out of jail. So I can't knock him and say he didn't do his job. I just feel like it came to a point where uh, 50 was kind of outworking him. So I felt like there was a clash with that. And I think he it, it, it turned into more because now Shot Money is Shot Money Excel. So now he's a big producer out there. So I think Shot Money got more. Was, was Shot Money a big producer? What, what, what are some big records that Shot Money did? No, not like I would just say, look, when I would say that, it was like he went from being in that basement to working with artists like that really, that was cool, but they wasn't really on. Right. To having what 50 I'm Cent and working with G Unit. So it was Shy Money. And he was Seth. president of G Unit. Yeah. But you got to remember, Fifth was screaming Shy Money Excel. So people wanted to know Shy Money Excel. He was a part of the movement. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but he like was. he said, when that point shit happened and money gets involved, shit starts to change. I didn't know anything about that. But as for me getting out of jail, you look at the video, Shy Money's coming to pick me up. If 50 didn't have time to do it, Shy Money came and got me. 50 brought me to the studio, to straight to bank shit. So I'm not going to say Shot Money wasn't the go-to guy. When 50 was too busy, Shot Money was the go-to guy. Right. But then but out I'll of the give blue, you an example. Out of the blue, he talks shit about you, about me. Yeah, of course. And, and, and that, just, but look, that just shows let me, me what his character let me, is like. Let me, let, me give you, let me give you a perfect example. Like, we started getting money, right? I came home, right? So Shot Money... And 50 baby moms, and I said this, I don't know if you, 50 baby moms, they turned into real estate agents. Okay. <laughs> out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so when I got some money, I ran in, you know, I came home, made some money. I, I did my first album. I did my tour. I made some money. We was getting kicked out of our apartment in Battery Park anyway. Too much noise, bitches, whatever. You know what I'm saying? 
And um, his girl was taking me around to see houses. So at that point, I don't know if you or your girl's a real estate agent. She making money off the shit. I don't. She just was persistent about it. Fifty baby moms. Because right, right, they make a percentage off the sale. I didn't. I'm a hood nigga. I don't know nothing about buying a fucking house. I just know she was calling me to go see houses. You know what I'm saying Shanika, she fifty baby moms hit us. She wanted to see houses too. I was gonna look at Pennsylvania, but Angie was on it, like persistent, shot money girl. And then I realized shot money made money off of me buying my house. Shot money made money off of Banks buying his house. Shot money probably made money off of Buck buying his house. Yeah. So it's little things that you don't know. Yep. Because financially, when you're making money, you're 25 years old. I don't think everybody, 50's too busy to give you the information you need. I just feel like Shot Money should have gave us better information. Right. Not saying I'm mad at him because, like I said, he came got me from jails and did a lot for me. I appreciate it. Talk shit about me, but I forgive him. Um, but, for instance, my first home, maybe my first home wouldn't have been a million dollars. Oh, that's how... You know, they got no, a nice I'm commission just, offer. Yeah, I see. I'm just They're saying, pushing you to a higher dollar but, amount so they can get more themselves. See yeah, what I'm I, saying? I you understand what I'm I saying? And listen. Maybe, it, look, I'm, t- I'm 25, 20, 25 years old coming out of jail. Maybe if I would have went to 50, 50 would have probably told me, you'll go to Pennsylvania, get a house the same size for 500000 Yeah. Save exactly. your money. Exactly. You know, why push for me? And I'm not saying my house wasn't nice. I'm just saying like, I just feel like financially, somebody would have gave me better advice. Instead right. of trying to, it seemed like, make profit make off you. Make a few you. extra dollars. It's, it's exactly. Nickel and dime. And, and this is what I'm saying. And my, that was a nice point, house. Don't yeah. get me wrong. I'm and not my, mad at him. I love, and, fell in love with yeah. the house. It was my choice, my decision. So I'm not mad. But what I'm saying is, I think a, a, a person would have told a 25-year-old that just got out of jail, that is not familiar with real estate, not familiar with taxes, not familiar with with, with with damn near nothing, just learning the industry, learning about publishing and all this other shit at that time, but didn't know nothing about real estate because I lived in a condo. I never had shit. Mm-hmm. I lived in a condo, paid rent. That's all I knew. I didn't know nothing about a 30-year loan mortgage. I didn't know nothing about a million dollars. I didn't, a million dollar home. I think I would have gave that 25-year-old Yale getting off of Rikers Island and getting out of shock. I would have told him to get a house for 400000 Exactly. 500,000. Exactly. And, you know, listen, and this, just, is, just, and this is just a just lesson. Just me giving, yeah, yeah just this is, this Yale just giving advice. younger Yale advice. Exactly. And which Shot Money would have gave me the advice because 50 did give me the advice to go to Pennsylvania and and do that because I would have saved I would saved millions of dollars. Exactly. You yeah. know, and, and at the and end of the cool. day. it's cool. I'm not mad at them. At the saying. end of the day, yeah. for everyone listening, don't be a Shot Money XL, man. Look at the big picture. Don't nickel and dime people. Yeah. And, and don't be a hater. Because at the end of the day, you know, I think with Shaw Money, I think there's a certain amount of jealousy. He's seen Vlad TV, you know, DJ Vlad come in, the broke dude with the camera, whatever else. Yeah. Now. Speak your truth, Vlad. You know what I mean? Now. Yeah. Speak your I, truth, I don't, I don't think Shaw Money is remotely touching the type of money nah, that nah, I touch. He's, he's, Not nah, even close. Yeah, I don't think he's touching nah, remotely nah, what Tony nah, Ayo's touching. Nah, nah, and this nah, is why you get this little venom he's and this little not. jealousy and this yeah. hatred and this bitterness. Because he could have been still been the president of G Unit. Yep. He could have had a piece of every fifties, every part of fifties album. He could have had right. a, a piece of the movie shit and everything. You right. know. But instead, he chose to be petty and want to nickel and dime. Yeah, and then I, when it doesn't yep. work out, he wants to diss people and talk yeah, bad about people definitely, publicly. Definitely. Really? So fuck you too, Shaw Money XL. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to put that out there. Yeah, yeah. Put it out there. <laughs> Speak your truth. All right? Look, I ain't mad at him. But all of a sudden, wham, your girlfriends are real estate agents. Yeah, exactly. Wham. <laughs> <laughs> Why you gonna take me to buy a crib for five hundred? That's what I would have did. You know what I'm saying? But it's cool. It's I ain't cool. Mad. It's I love whatever, my, man. I, I Listen, I'm house. doing great. I you love know, my house. Maybe you'll do as well as me one day, Sha. I love my house. Is it's cool. <laughs> my house is nice, Sha. But my yeah. new house in Calabasas, woo, that Ooh, I bought. I, no, yo, you that took I me to Calabasas. Right. Yeah, you, you came a long way to yeah, Calabasas. Exactly. Club. Me and Hollywood, they was looking at us for like, what the hell are these niggas doing you know? with this white boy? Huh? I keep forgetting to say this during my every interview with uh-huh. you, but I, I have to mention it. Because every time I'm on a plane and I go to the bathroom, in my head, I rap, 
I'm in Cancun with a bottle in the bedroom. Her pussy tight, tight like, like an airplane, airplane bathroom. bathroom. Yeah. Every time I'm in a bathroom and my forehead goes against that, you know, like oh, that man. slanted Definitely. part in the bathroom because oh, you don't have the but room. But ain't the Emirates bathrooms a little bigger? You feel yeah, like they're yeah. a little yeah, bigger. Yeah, Emirates. But I've, only been, I've only been in Dubai once. Yeah, I'm just saying, when definitely. I fly cross country on JetBlue or American, oh, your forehead, you're tight oh, yeah, in the yeah, airplane bathroom. bathroom. And I always, even before me and you were rocking with each other like this, Def- I definitely. always think of that lyric. Yo, man. Yo, if you got you got to go, you got to go. You know the airplane food sometimes get to you. Be eating it. You got to go to the bathroom. Be tight in that moment. You got to go to the bathroom, man. Worst and, place to take a shit is in them tight bathrooms. Oh, I hate those bathrooms. Yeah, I try not to take it. Oh, you know something? And this, this, I, but sometimes you got to go when you go to the airplane I, I, I bathroom. Told my, okay, I told myself I wouldn't ask you this, but fuck it. Yeah. Me and Aerie Spears, we started this conversation, uh-huh. right? Answer me honestly. Uh-huh. When you're at home, Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Not when you're out. Right. When you're in your own house. Right. When you go as a man, when you go to take a piss, do you sit down or stand up? I stand up. I don't I don't like to sit down. Really? I gotta take a shit. I always sit down at home. Nah. I know, I know Every they be like, time. don't sit down and pee, you a bitch. But if I gotta take a shit, that's different. I'm shit. Well, but sometimes when I go to pee, I end up taking a shit afterwards. Well, I I'm not gonna sit down on the toilet unless I know I gotta take a shit. But sometimes you don't know. Sometimes you're nah, chilling. I know when I got, you got I, you on your phone. You don't know. You, know you, what I'm you don't know if you gotta take a shit. <laughs> Sometimes it you comes get your a morning bit. coffee, right? You smoke a stove. I don't. I don't you drink don't know coffee. If you got, I know I have to take a shit. Listen, man. When I'm at home, I just want to relax. You know. Plus, you know, I gotta clean up afterwards. If you miss a little bit, you don't got Since a little splat on your toilets, shit. We, in Abu Dhabi, they had the Toto toilet. I got one of those in my house. How much you paid? Ten grand, five grand? No, it was like five thousand, fifty-five hundred. Does it warm Does up? Does it warm up yes. seats? And it got the bustier. Listen, listen. It's called got a, the, a, a total knee arrest. Five grand, I'll Listen, you yeah. can take a shit and not wash your hands afterwards. Let me explain why. When you walk up to the toilet, the lid opens by oh, itself. Oh, no, no, I, I, that's what I'm saying. You I, sit I, down, it's heated. I think I gotta After get 51. After you take a shit. I think I gotta get 51 you, and buy me You, you press a button and water, warm water, oh, no, sprays I, you. I know about and then, the to- and then the air dryer dries you out. No, I know about that. I, I, so I see, you never have to use no, toilet look, paper. No, look, there was And you levels. walk away and your hands are, you never had to touch toilet Vlad, paper. Look, look, Vlad, look. There was levels to the Toto. So I've, I've seen one before, but this one was on a whole nother level. Well, that's, the one, that's the one I got. This is the one you wave the hand. Nah, you, my, no, 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 no. We walk okay, up to it, the lid right. raises up. The lid opens, up. yeah. Yeah, everything you say, the seat is warm. Yeah. It got the the bustier. Yeah. Um, it, it got it, the, the fucking air and all that shit. Right. Yeah, I want to get that. I paid a I five, got that man. in my house. Yeah, I want to get one. I'm going to get the one. Best, best. Yeah, when I, when I So was, do you got to buy it and, and then the parts come with it? or you just No, it's complete. And you just get it installed by someone that knows what they're doing. Okay. Yeah. And then, like, it's got a little remote on the Put, side. On the wall. Yes, on the yeah, wall. Yeah, it's magnetic. I, yeah, you can take it off if you want, but I just leave yeah. it there. They said they said Caleb on one for Drake a while ago. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he made a video. Yours got music on it, too? No, no music. Oh, okay. No, I'm not going to say that. But it's just like, you know what I mean? Like, during the day, I might just go. You only got go, one or do you got? I just got one. I got to get more. But you, wanna you know get, what I'm saying? You want to get, how many yeah. bathrooms you got? Four or five? I'm quite sure. I got four bathrooms. I have seven bathrooms in my house. Damn. I thought I was balling. I got, hold on, one. I have seven bathrooms in my house. Three. No, wait. I have eight bathrooms in my house. Damn. I got four. Damn, I got eight doing, bathrooms in my house. You're doing better than me. I got to get my money up. Four bathrooms. Eight bathrooms. Still good. House. Yeah. Eight bathrooms. Eight bathrooms. So you're not going to get eight totals, though. No. I got one. One for the get master. One. I love it. You know, and, so, and here's the thing, right? Because sometimes, like, what I'll do is, like, let's say, like, I'm running around. I don't have, you know, maybe, like, I haven't had a chance to take a shower yet. I'll just go and just spray myself up, get nice definitely, and clean. You definitely, know what I'm saying? I'm, like, I, it, it just, I just feel cleaner the boosty, with that bathroom. The bustier, after taking this shit, you definitely feel cleaner. especially if it's, Especially if you got to take a super shit. Exactly. You, you take a super shit, you definitely feel like, with the bustier, you got out the shower. But I don't. What I liked about the Toto is because a lot of hotels that had a bustier next to it. With no, I don't no, know no, no, how I don't that, like that shit. No, no, no. I, I like the shit that's all integrated. I don't know how that shit works. Well, but the Toto, it, right? it was crazy. I, I, I just think that that toilet paper is like a thing of the past. Because think about it. Take okay, take some fucking Nutella, right? Some Nutella chocolate cream, and put it on your arm, and then take a paper towel and and wipe your arm clean. It's gonna spread. It, it, you might get most of it off, but then take that same arm and put it under your shower. No, I ain't going to lie. How, what's going to end I, up cleaner? I ain't going to lie. I just feel cleaner when, course, I, when I use that type of shower. Because the average person, to if you take a real bad shit, what do you, have, what do you feel like you got to Take a shower afterwards. You're going to take a shower. That's the average 
person if if right. you know you're gonna if you sh- it's a real bad one yeah you're gonna go take a shower but it feels better but, when every shit you take is like that but with the you know total what, what I experienced in Abu Dhabi <laughs> is you really don't have to take a shower after having exactly that exactly that's just the facts of that's it. just I need the facts. one five grand yeah it's worth it it's, it 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 was literally the best five grand I've ever spent definitely you know what I'm saying um. I just want to say, I, I listened to the Danza uh, podcast, which I was on also. Shout out uh, to Danza, few, few yeah, that's my guy. Um, you know, I remember you mentioned my name, you know, and you Always were like, yo, you know, I, I learned Vlad, a lot yeah. a lot of business from Vlad. Yeah, you know what I mean? So I, I appreciate you saying that. Yeah, you know I, mean, I mean, yo, Vlad, I appreciate you, man. I knew you for... A long time ago. I mean, you know, yeah, 20, like I, 20 years now. Like I always say, it was always, you know, Vlad TV, um, World Star. Um, it was This Is 50. It was, uh, what am I missing out? Forbes DVD, mm-hmm. Doggy Diamonds, and what's my, what's my man named Doggy Diamonds? And how, you get along with him or no? M Rec. M Rec. M Rec. Doggy. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm cool with with all those dudes. Uh, you know, I don't know if Doggy Diamonds likes me these days or not, but yeah, I, I, don't Diamonds, have, I don't have no issues with them. You know, what I mean, yeah, I think Forbes I think what they do is cool. Well, everybody, everybody hates Vlad. Everybody hates Vlad. That's not nope. true, man. Actually, like these days, like like the core, you know, most of the big podcasters, like me, Math Hoffa, yeah. Academics, Adam Twenty Two, yeah. Sean Cotton, like. You know, uh, Jason uh, Lee from Hollywood Unlocked. We all rock with each other. We yeah. all talk on the phone. We all do each other's shows. Everything else like that. Yeah, Jason uh, Lee Joe, Joe Budden crazy. doesn't like me. Whatever. You know what I mean? I don't have no beef. Uh, Nori. You know what I'm saying? Me and him had a little funk, but once again. Oh, Buzz don't like you? Huh? Buzz don't like Yeah, it goes oh, back. Wow. It was over the ransom shit from 15 oh, years shit, ago. I yeah, he's still mad about that. But I don't I don't personally care. Who got slapped back? Who was got slapped? Back? Uh Joe Bun's man got slapped by oh, Ransom's yeah, my man. Bad. That shit was crazy. Came to the he, door. Yeah. Wow. That shit was crazy. Exactly. He's still mad about that, but really it's one side. That was like 20 years ago. It's like 15 years ago. Yeah, I don't I don't really care. You know what I'm saying? Uh Gillian Wallow, um we had a, a a weird thing a long time ago, so so we oh, okay. we we don't talk. But these days, man, they've blown up, and I'm super happy. Yeah, for shout them. to them, man. Shout I'm, to everybody. I'm in super. The park I'm super happy that they're that they're in the, a there's similar enough space. Money. There's enough money and for everybody. And they're, they're in killing business, it out man. there, there's man. Enough, All these dudes, including including Joe, including I mean, I don't know Wallow, but I do know Gilly. You know, what I mean, if at any point they want to give me a call and have a conversation, you know, what I mean, we could do some business, or we could just be cool. It yeah. doesn't matter, man. You know, I'm successful. I'm 50 years old. I'm not trying to have active beef with nobody. And at the end of the day, I've learned in this business that we would all we all do better when we rock with each other because we all share information with each other. And ultimately, just because you watch, um, you know, million million dollars worth of game doesn't mean you won't watch a Vlad TV interview oh, right yeah, afterwards. Definitely, man. It's, you know, it's, a lot of times it'll, it'll connect. Did, you know, did, the, the I always say this: there's, there's always enough room for content with Instagram yeah. and YouTube and all the big and things. All that shit. Y'all doing like I check everybody. I'm gonna watch a Vlad page. I'm gonna watch Killy. I'm gonna watch Vilo. I'm gonna watch Joe Buttons. I'm gonna watch a little bit of everybody because you know it, it's it's what y'all doing for the game is crazy and you know yeah. like my awareness is up. Uh, like people are saying, yo, yeah, yo, this is this is a, your your second win. Like I've I've done did Vlad went from Vlad did Math Hoffa platform yeah. to drink champs Charlemagne, with another one, Charlemagne, another dude I yeah. rock with. I just did Breakfast Club and he does yeah. my show. Yeah. Envy, same thing. This is what I'm Envy, saying. Envy, so, Envy did a whole car feature to, where he showed fifties yeah. fifties uh yeah, yeah, cars. cars. Remember that shit? Yeah, shout to Envy. We all rock and, with and, each and, other and, and we all do better by right. rocking with each other. So everyone right. who feels they got some weird beef or they feel like, oh, I don't need Vlad. No, you don't need Vlad, but you will do better with Vlad because Vlad's been doing it longer than all of y'all. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Just strictly from time. In 2008, I launched Vlad TV as an interview platform on YouTube and I was the first one in the space to do it wow. and I've always embraced everyone that's coming up after me I've always every single person I've always been like yo call me up if you have any questions you know for and you work and, hard and, and, I do you, you work hard and you put the work in yeah. deserving if you put the work it's all what you put into it exactly. I can't complain about anybody and be a hater it's all what I put into it I, I look up to all these guys I want to eventually come with my podcast this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I got the yeah, weed. We've had conversations about I, it. I, I got the weed coming. I got the book coming. Um, I'm I'm doing sports betting deals. I got a deal with Bets.io. I'm looking for mm. another big deal. Like so, I'm I'm doing a lot. Can we talk about the tour now? Before I get out of here, let's talk about the tour. Let's talk about the tour. Where are we gonna start off with first? St. Louis, 
Denver. It's a long Sa- list St. of names. Louis, shout to Sexy Red. You know, um, the sex to St. Louis. I love it. We stayed. Where we stayed at? St. Louis. I think we stayed at the New Ritz. Flav? Was it a New Ritz or a New W? I think it was a New W we stayed at in St. Louis. And I like St. Louis for their food, their vibe. You know, of course, Sexy Red's from there. Shout out to her, all the ladies from there. But their food and their vibe is it's crazy. Just got to be careful going out because it's definitely not sweet in St. Louis. Denver, I see why the Denver Nuggets always win games because motherfuckers need oxygen up there. Yeah. I'm not going to say who, but niggas need oxygen. Um, What's next? Name somewhere else. Well, let's see. Use the Salt Lake City, Denver, St. Louis. Salt Lake Louis. City, the same thing. The air, uh, the mountain, the altitude. Uh, Noble, Noblesville, Indiana. Noblesville, Nashville, Tennessee. Cashville, Cincinnati. Tennessee. Look, Cashville, Tennessee, I felt bad for Buck because we filled out the arena. And I'm like, damn, we in your city. And 50 filled out the fucking arena. Uh. I think two days in a row or one day in a row. But we was in his city. So I know he felt bad because, honestly, you're supposed to be there. Bank's supposed to be there. Game's supposed to be there. All of them. Yeah. They're supposed to be there. But, you know, it's all love, like I said. But for Buck, I felt bad because that arena was packed. We was in his yep. city. Oh, C- Cincinnati. Ahead. Toronto. The, I love Nasty Natty. Toronto, uh, love Canada. Montreal. Don't sleep on Canada. Toronto is like New York. They do have guns out there. Mansfield. Um, Mansfield. Uh, Dairy great. Center, New York. New York, great. Uh, Cayuga Falls, Ohio. Shit, so many places. Bristol, Virginia. Yep. Brooklyn. Brooklyn, Barclays was crazy. Barclays, two J. nights Cole. in a row. Look, look, J. Cole came out. Uh. Bobby Smurda came out. Um, True Life came out. Oh, okay. Who else? Who else came out? Flav? For the Barclays. Oh, Fat Jadakiss came out. Crazy. That, mm-hmm. that night was crazy. And, you know, shout to all the New York artists that came out. Hartford, Definitely a movie. Hartford, Connecticut. Camden, New Jersey, oh, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Hartford, Hartford was crazy. Hold on, Hartford was crazy. Always, Connecticut is one of our name best places that love us. Virginia, uh, it. Raleigh, North Carolina. Raleigh, Charlotte, Look, Charlotte North on, Carolina. Look, slow down on Raleigh. Okay, because Raleigh, my father's. I actually buried there. My brother came out, so I love Raleigh. Okay, you know what I'm saying. Um, Charlotte, I love it there too. That was crazy a movie. Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta was crazy. We, yeah. It was crazy. We went to like four or five clubs. Shout out to my man, Ant the Ladies Man. It was crazy. We went to, and shout out to Mike Epps. Went to go see his show. Him and Harry, Henry Welch. Um, we went to Magic City. Atlanta's always a movie. You know, yes. and the dancers are like, New York, we're not spoiled like the Atlanta boys because the girls are like totally naked. So Magic City was crazy. And we stayed in the Ritz. Turned up crazy. Smoked it out. Tampa. West Palm Beach. Hold on. You got to slow down on Florida. Sorry. Tampa, we stayed El Resort by the water. Or was it Flor- Fort Lauderdale? But Tampa was crazy, too. West Palm Beach. Yeah, I love it. West Palm uh, Beach. Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Yeah. See, Tuscaloosa and Alabama, ne- Alabama Roll Tide. I've never really been there before, Tuscaloosa. And that, but I know when I scream that bitch on stage, <laughs> Roll Tide! They was fucking going crazy. <laughs> it, this was definitely... The illest tour I've been on since anger management with Eminem. Uh, Houston and Dallas. Oh, come on. Houston, come on. Houston. Albu- Albuquerque. Phoenix. Yo, hold on. When you when, Slow down. Because when you talk about Houston and Dallas, we got to talk about the beautiful women and we got to talk about the food. You know what I ate out there in Houston? I had um, alligator. I just had alligator in New Orleans. I love it. I had <laughs> alligator nuggets. Yep. I had dirty rice. Mm-hmm. And I had me some gumbo on the side from Papa Do's. And shout out to Papa Do's because they got like five different. When I go back to Houston, I'm going to get eat like a motherfucker. They got like five different Papa Do's. They got a seafood one. They yeah. got like, I didn't even realize. I, I ate that. a Papa Do's in Atlanta last time. Yo, yeah, I love dope. Papa Do's. Gator dope. nuggets. Yep. Dirty, dirty rice and a motherfucking gumbo. Yep. Uh, where are we? Where are we? In Dallas. Uh, Dallas. Yeah, Dallas, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, La- Los Angeles, slow the down, crypto slow arena. Slow down. Because Phoenix, we actually doing that in March. Um, Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I You're at the never... Talking Stick Resort Amphitheater. Yo, look, well, I, 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 I don't know. Listen, what's, what's the Talking I love, Stick? I don't know. It's an outside venue, probably some shit. Yo, listen. Shout to Live Nation. You know, it's their, their venues. Listen. Um, It was 102 degrees flat. Listen to me, flat. It was 102 degrees at 8 o'clock in the morning, Jeez, 
We yeah. had to cancel the show. There was no way we were going to perform. By the time we would have got to the stage, it was like 107. I don't know how people live in Phoenix. And shout out to Phoenix. I love it there. But shit, we had to postpone the show. Yeah, too damn hot. 102 degrees, bro. I'm talking about you go outside, you can't even breathe. Uh. That's why I say Denver, Salt Lake because of the altitude, and Phoenix because of that fucking weather. L.A. Crypto. Crypto.com Arena. Come on. Uh, Chula Vista. We, hold on, hold on. Crypto, we waiting for that Shaq. Um, no, no, not Shaq. Kobe. Kobe's um, statue. Yeah. But to go to the crypto, we was at by the Ritz that was right near the crypto. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was an amazing show. And who came out for the crypto? YG came out. Nas. Uh, Nas. Nas. Okay. Um, which was crazy. Chris Brown. Chris Brown. Chris Brown came out. Shout out to the And doesn't 50 got a song with Nas coming out? Um, yeah, he came out already. It already came out. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, Nas came out, YG, and of course, you, who was that? Nas, YG, and Chris Brown, Chris Brown. of course. Neo. Chris Brown, of, huh? Neo. Neo. Neo came out. Okay. So that was the best part of, of, of like when all these artists was coming out. Like I said, J. Cole, Bobby Smurda, and them came true life. And Jada Kiss at, at the Barclays, and then, like you said, Chris Brown and Neo, all these guys at the crypto. And you know what made it ill about crypto, though? Like backstage was a fucking movie. Like Tyler the Creator was back there. Mm. All these fucking big artists was back there. Who Kid was back there. So that's what made that crazy because everybody, like, fucking came. Oh, yeah. came, but he left. Yeah, Lil Wayne came. Lil Wayne he came. Left. Okay. Uh, so it was crazy. Uh, Chula Vista, California, Irvine. Irvine, yeah. Mountain View, California, yeah, in the Mountain Bay. Mountain View, all, all beautiful My places. My home area, uh, Sacramento. That's your home area where? Well, I grew up in San Mateo, which is like 20 minutes from Mountain View. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, Mountain View was crazy. Yep. It was, definitely was an experience. The Shoreline Amphitheater. I Go, remember growing yeah. up, passing by it all the time. Yeah, going to all these places like I haven't been to in years, and some places I haven't been to at all. Mm -hmm. So that's why I like name, name them and shout everybody out, because yep. this was the biggest, biggest tour. And remember, a lot of your favorite rappers, Vlad, and rappers that are not your favorite, can't do what 50 just did. Yeah. You, you, they cannot do it. But we're not over yet. Go I ahead. mean, uh, Sacramento, California. Definitely. Always Sacramento, Rich, best bud. Best bud. Good Ridgefield, food. Uh, Richfield, Washington. Seattle, Washington. Yep, yep. Nice. Seattle, Washington. Uh, been then we got to go uh, in Canada. Canada. Vancouver, I, look, Calgary, look, Edmonton, this, Winnipeg. Yes. This is what you got to understand about Canada. I went on my own tour in Canada. Mm. And I love Canada. And I went there in the wintertime. You go there in the wintertime, it's a bitch. Summertime is, is better. But what I like about Canada is, is different culture, cultures in all the places, Edmonton, Dunder Bay, all these places. Like, for instance, Toronto is all Jamaicans. So, like, that's when you're on tour, that's when you're going to get your last good Jamaican food is, 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 is Toronto, Canada. Right. But look, Montreal is all Haitians. So you get your best... Food from there, from from in Montreal, but there's not too many Jamaicans in Montreal to feel like, and there's not a lot of Haitian food in Canada, because you know once you go to Europe, there's no Jamaican food. All that shit is out the mm -hmm. question. You ain't getting none of that shit. But keep going. Uh, St. Paul, Minnesota. Yep. Chicago, Minnesota. Illinois. Yep. Chicago out. Chicago uh, definitely. Who we brought out for Chicago? It wasn't Dirk. Didn't come out. No, it wasn't Dirk. No, we didn't bring no artists before. You sure? Oh yeah, we had the whole power cast. Oh yeah, we had Chris Loft in there. Gianni came. What's my girl from um follow on the gram? From um from the Chicago show, The Force. Gabrielle. Gabrielle was there. Yeah. Um Coffee was there, you know, your favorite bad guy, Lamar. Yeah. He was there. <laughs> yep, definitely. So Chicago was definitely a movie. Uh, and, you know, the house that Jordan built, man. Come on. There we go. I got a jersey that actually says Yayo on the back. It was like a lot of the stadiums, they would do jer special jerseys for us. So that was nice. Cool. Uh, but their pizza still ain't fucking better than ours, man. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? The deep dish? I like the deep tomato, dish. Tomato, but it's not. I, I, I like deep dish. But I like, I like Chicago cheese, pizza, yeah. But with, but it's not better than New York. I like it better than New York. You're fucking out your mind. I, I like it better than New York. I'll just be honest. You're on drugs, bro. Shout out to, uh, go to go Illuminati's. To, yo, look, go to go to go to uh, Margaritas on Jamaica Avenue, or go to Gabby's in Queens. All right. And let me tell I you, was, I like Angelo's in uh, I had in New York. I had but... Chicago uh, deep dish pizza, and it's cool. But well, it's, it's cool. different. They, they're yeah. all about the tomato sauce. Yeah. They're not about the cheese. Right. It's different. When you get pizza, it's about the fucking cheese. Okay. Who just wants 
pizza with just tomato sauce, man. I don't uh, give a fuck if it's deep dish. Clarkston, Michigan. I always love Michigan. Uh, Baltimore, Maryland. Of course, B more. And then, came out for B and then back to Homdale, New Jersey. Jersey. And then Toronto, it. Ontario again. Yep. In Toronto, I love it. Shout to Presser and Bun Dog and all my Toronto people out there, man. Shout to Drake. Drake is like the king out there. And all the OVO people out there, man. You know how it is, man. Do you want to start breaking down the international part too? Of course. All part right. Two. Let's so talk we got about Amsterdam. It. Now let's get into that. <laughs> The red light district. Yeah. The best weed in the world. Shout to Greenhouse. Shout to pre Me. Shout to all the coffee shops there. Shout to Arjun. You know, and one thing about the uh, the red light district is it's one of the the craziest things you'll see in your life. You have to see it. Yeah, I've Meaning, seen it. Meaning pussy sells from, what, 9 a.m. to 3 a.m. And then it opens back up. 9 a.m. to 3 a.m. pussy is selling. And even if you go with your girl or your wife, just to experience it, just to walk through the red light district, because a lot of it's shut down because they're turning those into condos. It's more mm. profitable. But the red light district is definitely one of the most craziest things I've seen, but peaceful at the same time. Everybody rides bikes. There's no violence and drugs is legal. Yep. But the coffee shops is amazing. Hollywood, we go to coffee shop. What we do? Order food, order wings, smoke weed. And that's when I told you everything is more of a layback vibe, like a Sade, a fucking Sizzle, or this or whatever layback vibe. But Amsterdam, that's on my top three of places you have to go. All right, keep going. Hamburg, Germany. Germany, I love. Copenhagen, Denmark. Love Denmark. Denmark is we we talking about good food in Denmark. Good, the best hotels. I love I love Denmark. I love Germany. Go ahead. Then you got Stavanger, Oslo, and. Trondheim, Norway. Oh, Norway is very good. Norway is a very nice place. There's good weed in a lot of these places too, because you know we smoke everywhere we got. We go, me, like the barber, and Uncle Murder, they call us the three amigos. Because the thing about tours, everybody got their own cliques. Mm -hmm. Like Hollywood or Hangover Production, Flav, he has to take care of the band and the dancers, so he'll be with them. I'll, the three amigos, me, Murder, and Lytro. That's 50s, light, Lights, 50s Barber, and Uncle Murder. We like brothers, dude. Just be us. But everywhere we go, we get the best weed, except for Muslim countries, of course. Yeah. Dubai and yeah, you got, Saudi Arabia. Out nah, there. they cutting your hands off. You yeah. Get caught, yeah. They chop, uh, chopping your hands off, motherfucker. Stockholm, Sweden. Love Sweden. Uh, Latvia. Lithuania. And you got to remember, we love all these places for different kind of breakfast. Like, because you know a lot of portions are smaller overseas. The food is smaller. But they had the best croissants, the best turkey, the best breakfast. Like I'm, I, the, when it comes to breakfast, I was loving overseas breakfast, man. And then back to Hanover, Germany. Then Berlin, Germany. Berlin, and then, Berlin Wall. Uh, Oberhaus in Germany. Mm -hmm. Then you got Croatia. Croatia, I love. Haven't been in a minute. Hungary. Yep. Switzerland. Yep. Switzerland, love it. Then a uh, hamburger. Nice in Milan. A, 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 a nice burger, France. A Burger King. Burgers like fifty dollars out there, but I love it. Nice, France. Love Nice. Uh, Milan, France. Italy. Milan, love it. Oh, then back to Germany. Milan again. Is, you guys are going back to Germany a lot. I where's see. the Where's the Armani Hotel? That's in Milan. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Armani I, Hotel was fucking nuts, man. Yep. Um, here we go. Uh, Brussels, Belgium. Love it. Czech Republic. Love it. Poland. Love Poland. Back to France again. Paris this time. Yep, Paris. Love Paris. For Ireland. The, you gotta love Paris for the Mona Lisa, the Eiffel Tower, and the food is great. Mm -hmm. Scotland. Scotland, love it. Then then England, you guys hit Manchester, London, Birmingham. Damn. Love it. Over and there. a couple bunch of shows. Then Newcastle. Yeah. Every, and then Glasgow, Scotland, and then it's over. Yeah. So look, every it actually kept on going. That wait, it wait, actually I, wait, hold kept, on. I'm missing some? Okay, so th that's there's some more, but it, I, it actually I, I, kept I run rolling. out of paperwork. Yeah. And, 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 and like I said, the people from Live Nation will tell you that only an artist like 50, uh, Eminem, Snoop, or Dre, certain artists could do 103 shows and not be tired and stand up to, you know, to the, to the fucking trials and tribulations of tour. Because it, it, it comes down from, from production to management to road management and it, it was amazing something for me to see because you see the behind the scenes, the motherfuckers that's there 6 a.m. while I'm sleeping. I'm enjoying my four seasons. There's motherfuckers building the stage and taking it apart 6 a.m. 
but they're getting paid good, and, you know, but it, it's a lot behind the music that people don't understand. Or road management, waking dudes up, the dancers up, like Flav and waking the dancers up and, and production, Hollywood's going, production, they're up early. I'm laying in my bed, I'm chilling, I'm eating, ordering breakfast, room service, chilling, laying back, smoking, and they're working. So there's a whole thing to it that people don't understand. It was amazing for me to see from down I said from catering to production. Oh, from, from and, and you know, it's not one man, like everybody's coming there, of course, to work for 50, because 50 cuts the budget. But when you think of everything that's behind it from production, road management, catering, dancers, um, um, fucking uh, stewardess on the, on the jet, pilots, everybody's like one big team and 50 pays for everything. That's the craziest part. 50 pays for everything. And if, what, what I mean is, how many people you think was working? Two, 300 people? Mm. We can't even name it. And every night was was repetitive. It was the same show, which was great. I mean, 50, we, we performed the same time as Beyonce. Beyonce was on tour. Um, Drake in 21 was on tour. And uh, I'm not sure who else was on tour, but I know our tour, and all, them tours was great, but our tour kept fucking, it felt like it was going forever. And, you know, being home, away from your family and everything like that is cool, but the culture, you know, going to Paris, eating chocolate in the morning for breakfast, that's what they love, or being in... Abu Dhabi and you're around that the hotel that has a racetrack around it or being in Dubai and you and the club is sending you a hundred bottles or being in Perth and a girl is throwing a quacker on the table a big rat like it's just these experiences <laughs> I live in a moment yeah. it's like I come home and I press the reset button but I get fucking bored because I'm like damn I just was in Dubai I just was in Germany I just was in Germany eating what kind of food they had. I just was in Thailand smoking the best weed. You know what I mean? I just was in Amsterdam in the red light district, just walking through the red light district, smoking a joint. Those moments you cannot fucking take away from me in life. Those are the those are the moments that I live for. The money is great. I made six figures, of course. You call me 50s hype man. Well, you're 50s hype man. Put your hands up. I'm six feet. I go buy two houses right now. <laughs> I'm just being honest. You call me 50s hype man all day. I don't even, honestly, I like being on 50s tour better than my tour. Mm. And it makes sense. Well, it's my a bigger tour, production, obviously. It's bigger production. Yeah. I'm in better hotels. You know, these promoters are trying to throw me in the fucking Holiday Inn. You know, when I'm 50, <laughs> these promoters are throwing us in fucking Armani Hotel, the W. I'm getting complimentary breakfast. Actually, Abu Dhabi, I think the phone had a butler button with butler. I'm yeah. just hitting them for, for no reason. Like, yo, let me get some ice or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Those are the moments that I live for. So this toy is like, in 50s crazy, he came back. He goes straight to the next game, with South of Sire's son, Tracy mm -hmm. Morgan, all of them there. Me, I had to reset. I had to take, we've been home for how long? Five days, maybe? Seven, eight days? Two weeks now or a week now? It's been two weeks. You know, you were hitting me when you were on the road, like, yo, I'm about to be back. Yeah, you got to do this I couldn't, interview. I'm like, I, I couldn't you. sleep because we're 13 hours ahead yep. of, of y'all. I try to call business, handle business is hard because the time difference. But, like, I press the reset button, and look, I'm ready to go now. There we go. I'm like, where I'm flying to now? I want to go to Cali, Detroit, local. But it's like, I feel like I got to keep moving. That's why when you call me, yo, Vlad, for the New Year's, happy New Year's, everybody. Merry Christmas. This is... I don't know what episode we on now. We got a lot of them. But we got a lot of them. I appreciate Vlad. Um, look out for me. I'm, I, I got the dogs coming now. Look out for that. Me, big boy, my man Matt. Um, shout to Bets.io. Shout to uh, 50. Um, I'm working on a book deal. I'm working on a movie deal. And I'm working on uh, a podcast deal, which Vlad might be a part of. We're going to talk about that. I got a couple of deals on the table. So for all you companies... Give up them checks. That's what it is. Tony Yeo. Until next time. Till next Round time, Black TV. Round of applause. Round of applause. Round of applause. Yeah. Peace.